One-time start of this Goodies 500 from Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. It has rained a lot this weekend, and because of that, there was no qualifying. They'll line up according to points. And so here is the starting lineup for today's race. On the right there, you see the number of points by Jeff Gordon, and below that, the number of points that a driver is behind the one in front of him. In other words, Sterling Marlin is 34 points back of Dale Earnhardt, who is in second position in the point standings. There's down through 15. Remember, the top 10 in the points get to be on stage at the NASCAR Winston Cup Banquet at the Waldorf Astoria in Midtown Manhattan. They're the top 30, and those were the ones determined by the point standings. Now these others here got in either by being a winner from last year, the postmark on the entry blank, and the last four are provisional starters, including Jeremy Mayfield, Todd Bodine, and Hutt Strickland. Now the storylines for today's race. Jeff Gordon is on his way to a Winston Cup championship, leading by 309 over Dale Earnhardt. And Rusty Wallace is on the move in the, the point standing. And there's a good battle, as you pointed out, Bob, looking at the start, starting lineup for getting into the top 10 in points. Matter of fact, five drivers separated by less than 100 points. And rookie points, Ricky Craven and Robert Presley still waging a great battle to be the rookie of the year in 1995 in Winston Cup competition. There are new pit rules today. Only two lug wrenches, air wrenches, can be used instead of the usual three during the pit stops. And there's a lot of other news for the weekend. And the pit rules, that probably will slow down the pit stop about two or three seconds by taking that one air wrench that third air inch away from the teams. We'll tell you about the other driver and mechanic changes as we go through the afternoon. Right now, however, in a little more than a lap, we'll be able to go racing for 500 laps on this half-mile oval at Martinsville. Today's field consists of 21 Fords, 11 Chevys, and four Pontiacs. Total of 36 in the lineup. And the light is off atop the Pontiac safety car. We will be going green next time by. Here are those that failed to make the field, and a couple of these, including the 31 and the 71 cars, would have been eligible because of point standings. However, they were out of provisionals. So there are the six drivers who were not able to get into the race because of the rain that we had that washed out the qualifying. So a lot of drivers that wanted to qualify because there were some cars that were running awfully fast that we might normally see up front. Joe Nemechek in particular was one of the fastest cars on the track. He's starting far back in the field, and Bobby Hamilton, everybody thought, had a good shot at winning the pole, too. So we'll see who's going to be the fastest here to get ready to go, Bob. Crowd on its feet, the green flag waves, and the Goodies 500 from Martinsville is underway. First lap, get the bonus points. Here's the battle for fifth position. It's Bobby Lavani outside of Mark Martin. That's right. Dale Earnhardt did receive those five bonus points. So now Jeff Gordon is only 304 points ahead of him in the point championship battle. One of our five cameras today mounted inside or on top of race cars. This is the roof cam of Ted Musgrave. And it looks like Mark Martin is really struggling in that Babylon Ford to begin with. Man. Probably waiting for the tires to heat up. These tires, uh, they had to run them three or four laps for them to really get seated in so they could feel comfortable with them. Rusty Wallace getting a little loose off the turn. He sure did. He was uh, in a position to take third from Marlin. Now does take third from Sterling Marlin. Rusty Wallace going for four consecutive wins here at Martinsville is up to third already. It's Earnhardt leading uh, Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace as we follow battles in the pack. There is Bobby Hamilton on the inside of Derek Cope. Now Derek Cope has been coming up on the outside there, using that outside groove as everybody wanted to get to the inside. Derek said, well, I'm just going to go on the outside here a while, and he did a good job, passed several cars out there. The Rick Mass following right along behind him. And Michael Walter came off the second corner. Looks like he got the car out of shape or something and lost a couple of spots. And he sure did. He was way out of shape. I thought he was going to crash, and he's losing positions. is back at about uh, 11th or 12th position. Walter running 11th. Morgan Shepard just ahead. 
subject of some of the news that we'll cover later. Will not be with the 21 Citco team next year, the Wood Brothers. That's Bill Elliott there in the 94 car ahead of Shepard, Michael Waltrip, Rick Mass, and Cope. Ricky Rudd in the 10 car, Jeff Bodine in the 7, following Dale Jarrett in the 28 car. Looks like Bodine making pretty good speed on the outside. These races in which they line up because of point standings really create some interesting racing because it's very possible that the fastest car starts in the back. Now, look at the upper left-hand side of your screen. We like to make you feel like you're at the racetrack, and that's what you would see as a scoring pylon at any racetrack you would go to. 492 laps to go, and there are the top 10 listed down the left-hand column. Now, when those positions change, regardless of whether they're at the line or not, they will be reflected on that scoring pylon. Mike Wallace is on the move. He started in last position and has uh, passed, oh, maybe a dozen cars. Yeah, he was another one of those drivers that saw that outside groove opening up. Again, everybody wanted to dip down and get down on the inside, and when they do that, they get bumper to bumper, and they don't run as fast down there as they might normally could, and so it opens up that outside, and Mike Wallace took advantage of it, and he did pick up a lot of spots. Dick Trickle and Hud Strickland are behind Strickland, named this week to drive the Stavola Brothers car next, now, for the next three years. Battle for second develops as Rusty Wallace goes to the inside of Jeff Gordon at the line, and in fact, Rusty does take over second position. Jeff Gordon's car doesn't appear to be working as well as he would like for to because Dale Earnhardt has built up a substantial lead here, and now Gordon loses second to Rusty. Yeah, Earnhardt has just driven away. Rusty Wallace saw that. You can see how far he is out front there. There it is. Down a half a straightaway. So Rusty in second, Gordon in third, Sterling Marlin is fourth, and Bobby Labonte fifth. We have completed 12 laps out of 500 on an overcast day here in Martinsville. Ooh, awfully close there. Marlin going inside of Jeff. If Jeff averages a 10th place finish in the remaining six races, he will win the NASCAR Winston Cup. Jerry, what's Jeff's problem? Well, the car obviously getting very, very loose. Ray Abraham watching as we are, not only here on the front stretch, but by virtue of the monitor, you see the Sterling Marlin car now make the move to Gordon trying to use the upper group to keep the car's RPMs up and not bind the car up and take a chance on spinning it out. But the car obviously very loose entering the corner. And Marlin was loose coming off the corner that time as he tried to pass Jeff. He did not. Jeff maintains third position with Marlin fourth and Bobby Labonte running in fifth place in the early stages of the 500 lap goodies 500. AC Delco knows that as a car gets older, its engine runs rougher. So we developed a spark plug to help bring back new car feel and things really gelled. Introducing Rapid Fire from AC Delco. It makes an engine idle up to 27% smoother and accelerate with up to 18% quicker throttle response. New Rapid Fire. Its performance ought to have the competition shaken. In these mountains, you need a tough truck. Dave Ashley, search and rescue volunteer. Trails, I tend to make my own. It's one torture test after another. But the people I'm looking for depend on someone to find them. Well, I depend on something, too. My Ford F-Series. How do you learn a job like this? Let's just say I drive something tougher than a golf cart on the weekends. Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Your car's engine was made for the open road. But that's not where it is, day in and day out. Stop and go driving can kill an engine by creating deposits and wear that rob performance and shorten engine life. That's why you need the added protection of TM8, a new engine treatment from Valvoline. TM8 coats moving parts with eight friction-fighting ingredients, including Teflon. So no matter where you are, your engine will run just like it's on the open road. TM8 from Valvoline. Because driving is more stop than go. 
Dad, wake up, what? Dad. Get up, Dad. What is it, Jack? It's Saturday. You said you would take me to McDonald's for breakfast Saturday. Yeah, uh, and you I know. And you said I could have an egg muffin and a big juice. And you said you and Mom would have pancakes and sausage and coffee. And you said you wouldn't go to work today. You said. I know, but it's 3.30 in the morning. Oh. We got plenty of time, okay? Okay. I'll be back in exactly 10 minutes. <laughs> ESPN Speed World coverage of the Goodies 500 being brought to you by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, it's like buying time. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by NASCAR 94 Year in Review. To order, call 871 NASCAR. Well, as you can see on the windshield of our. Uh, camera it's beginning to precipitate at Martinsville there was an 80 percent chance uh, last night 50 percent chance the weather bureau said today but a little bit falling right now as Michael Waltrip and Rick Mass both go to the inside of Morgan Shepard in a car and trouble off of turn two Jimmy Spencer did he spin that or just I, don't know, I think he just got up close to the wall anyway he, he has come into the pits on the back stretch and they're changing the right side tires like those What's Morgan Shepard's brake? This is the right front brake system on the Citco Ford. And watch the rotors. It just turns cherry red and stays that way all the way around the racetrack. So when I say the brakes are important, you can see just how important they are. Boy, that, that one spark there is really dramatic. Yep. And Morgan is going back in the field right now. He got up on the outside when Michael Walker got past him and he's lost six other positions. Can't get back in. There you see him on the outside. And Schrader moves to his inside now. Behind him is Jeff Cor is uh, Jeff Odine, I should say. As a matter of fact, some of the fellows this morning that put the cameras in these cars would tell me they had to run a hose to the camera to cool the camera. They were afraid that all that heat off the brake would melt their camera. <laughs> and then we'll see Morgan Shepard with Jeff Odine on the inside. And you're right, Morgan just cannot get to the inside, and the, the line is going by. And there's a, some uh, moisture on our camera down in turn one. Here's the battle for sixth position as Terry Labonte tries to work inside of Ted Musgrave. Quite a bit of rainfall, it looks like. In fact, the spectators here in the grandstand below us are beginning to reach now for their rain gear, including umbrellas and rain slickers. And Bob, at this moment, it hasn't started raining hard enough that NASCAR, they feel that the cars, the wind off of them, the heat off of them is keeping the track dry enough now that they can continue to race. If it gets a little harder, of course, since these cars start slipping around, of course, they will put the race under caution. But so far, they've been able to keep the track surface dry. And I think Bernard has reported to his crew that, it is, that he would like to see the caution because it's getting a little slippery out there. Dale is within just a few seconds, really, of coming up on the rear of the field and starting to lap some of the slower cars. And the first one that he would lap would be Ward Burton in the 22 car. That's the one running at the end of the field. Jimmy Spencer is still uh, made a pit stop on the back stretch. The yellow is out. Jerry, rain? Yeah, that's exactly it, guys. In fact, just a moment ago, with Benny Parsons' comedy, Benny, you're exactly right. Earnhardt is maybe one of the best when it comes to a slick racetrack. Finally said, hey, it's really starting to get slick out here. The cars really get starting to slip going in the turn and coming off. And when they were approaching that lap traffic in the back of the field, with the car not handling like it was and the rain getting a little worse, he went ahead and radioed his whole children's say, we need to go ahead and tell the NASCAR officials that it's time for the yellow flag. And that's what they did. They waited just a moment ago. Well, this is amazing. It stopped raining here last night and didn't rain a drop of significance until <laughs> the race started. <laughs> Ten laps into the race. And we can see the crews immediately put in the tarps down on the pit stalls, trying to keep it as dry as possible. So the field now at reduced speed here at Martinsville because of rain falling from the Virginia skies. We'll be back with more from Martinsville in just a moment. Genuine Direct 
Rusty Wallace stock car. It is time for breakfast. You have one dollar and ninety-nine cents. What are you going to do? Four rise and shine combos from Hardy's. Choose a made-from-scratch sausage biscuit, ultimate omelet biscuit, biscuit and gravy, or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. We'll give you hash rounds and your choice of coffee, orange juice, or a soft drink. Four combos, one ninety-nine each, only from Hardy's. Answer me, Private. Hardy's. All right. <laughs> Fresh from the kitchen at Hardy's. There's no track in the world that's tougher on brakes than the one in Martinsville, Virginia. And when drivers take the green flag here, they all have one thing in common, the same brand of brakes. Because without them, you can't come down this straightaway at 120 miles an hour and still make it through the turn. So which brand do the top drivers use to get them through 500 laps at Martinsville? Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. And we stock them at AutoZone. Did you patch the roof? Yes, dear. Did you wash the cat? Yes, honey pie. Did you ask your boss for that raise? That's it! I'm not listening to nothing else but NFL Prime Monday. Nothing but ESPN's Tariko, Theismann, and Sharp recapping who got cream Sunday, who's busted up, who's gonna kick whose butt in Monday's big game, so I can't hear anything you say till after the show. Oh, Charlie, can I get you a cold one? Yes, honey lip. Pit stops underway here at Martinsville. The 11th time winner at this track, Darrell Walter, been for two right side tires and a round of wedge out. Kyle Petty, Joe Nemechek, and Warren Burton, along with Hutch Strickland, all making early stops. Strickland did not beat the field coming around. He'll lose a lap here as we make lap 34 at Martinsville. Back upstairs. Rain still continuing here, albeit very lightly. The uh, caution still out, and Morgan Shepard has been in a couple of times to try to get his problems solved. And if he hurries, but he's going to have to charge. He really is. He's got the go sign as he gets down uh, at the end of pit road. He did come in the, the last lap and change right side tires. Came back in this time and changed left side tires. And those cars that are back near the end of the field with the new pit rules now, pit stop rules, it's tough for them to make a four tire change or even on a caution and beat the caution car. Well, we talked about the new pit rules that are into effect as a result of an incident at Dover. It involves two air wrenches instead of three. Who better to explain than BP? Let's focus on the right rear tire changer. Watches as he completes his job. He stands up and runs around to help the left front tire changer, leaving his impact gun and hose laying on pit road. When Jeff Bodine, the pit stop is complete and Jeff Bodine leaves, you see the hose and impact wrench laid on pit road? If a car had been pitting behind them, had driven across that, it could create a problem. Jeremy Mayfield, once again, the right rear tire changer, completes his job. He runs around to help the left rear, and again, leaves the hose and impact wrench laying on pit road. We see there isn't a car behind them, but there could be a car behind them to run over that hose and impact wrench and fling it into the pits. So NASCAR decided to clean up pit road. Let's examine the two pit stops. This is from Dover last week on Terry Labonte's car. Watch as the guy's taking the lug nuts off the left side tires. The right side is down. The jack man runs around, jacks up the left side. All these fellas had to do last week was take the tires off, slide the new ones on, pick up the gun, and tighten them up. And the car is to drive away. Let's show you what's going to happen this week at Martinsville. Watch the right rear tire changer. He takes the tire off. He slides it on. The jackman lets it down. Now, the, both the rear and front have to come around, bring the gun with them to take the lug nuts off the left side. They take the tire off, slide the new one on, tighten up the lug nuts, and then Labonte is away. But the impact wrenches are back over by the wall out of harm's way. The Mark Martin Jack Roush group just might have an advantage because they're used to doing this in Bush Grand Nice Race for several years. They've used the two impact rule. So with more experience, theoretically, the better you should be. And we'll see, even with experience, these guys still do it in just over 22 seconds. About five seconds more than we're accustomed to seeing in Winston Cup competition. As Ned indicated, those uh, 16 second pit stops are no longer. It's going to take them much longer than that to get the four tires changed using just two air wrenches. And there we see those fellows 
What they're doing right now is they're examining their pit stop. They've taped the pit stop. They're replaying it now to see exactly what happened and how, how they were going. Jerry Punch? And you know, Benny, they're only going to allow the use of two air wrenches, as you said, but the thing is, if you break one of those two wrenches, you're only going to be able, allowed to use the one that's left. And the reason NASCAR did that is because it would be very, very difficult to police the fact that the crew could say, hey, this one isn't working real well, so I want to use the third one I got laying across the wall. In an 18-second pit stop, it wouldn't be fair to the NASCAR official to have to police that. So Gary Nelson said, look, here's the deal. During a pit stop, the two wrenches you carry across the wall are the only two you can use. Now, once that pit stop is over, if one of those two is broken, you can replace the broken one for the next stop. But during that stop, if you break one, you got one left. If you break two, you might as well go to the back of the Buick and get the old uh, metal wrench out. That's what you're going to be using to change tires. Hey. Everybody has a tarp down to keep the uh, surface dry in the pit area, but the Childress crew keeps everything dry, don't they? And I have never seen such a huge tarp. I mean, this must be from the surface or something. <laughs> Where did our old Childress get such a deal? That looks more like a tent, Jerry. Hey, guys, I just asked Childress about this tarp. He said, you know, this thing is big enough. We might can stretch it out and just cover the racetrack <laughs> and wouldn't have to worry about the rain at all. We just put up enough enough tent poles uh, we can just cover this whole racetrack <laughs> speaking of the rain let's check in with our own weatherman here john kernan john jerry in an effort to get the most up-to-date radar picture we're ordering one up right now via telephone but i can tell you about the one that uh, was taken about 15 minutes ago just a small insignificant little shower here in this area otherwise the radar picture looks really really good hey john yeah there's nothing insignificant about the racetrack getting wet now <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess so. But, yeah. you know, maybe we kind of use that in a relative term. Oh, like, yeah. uh, most right. of my relatives are insignificant. You know, that, <laughs> that type of deal. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> it did rain enough to create some dark areas on the racetrack. The groove is uh, still light gray, but there are other areas of the track down to the inside uh, in the straightaways and the outside in the turns that uh, did darken because of the shower that is still going on to a slight degree they do have the jet dryer out and that will uh significantly change the um racetrack okay here's the radar john what's going on now okay you can see the green here this is the martinsville speedway right there that little speck that is now up here <laughs> oh boy we're having fun here today aren't we now i know how willard scott and all those other guys feel whenever that the little clicker doesn't go but uh, i tell you what it looks pretty good i think it looks good don't you yep looks pretty good to me as it comes right back up just a little rain in the area so i think we are going to be fine for this afternoon what's well, it moving to the northeast john yeah it's moving it's moving away from us in that okay. direction bob and Good. probably another four or five minutes of uh, of this light type of precipitation we will hold you to that mr <laughs> meteorologist <laughs> okay in the meantime we will take a break and come back with more live coverage of the goodies 500. If you're on the lookout for quality used auto parts, and tons of them, Jim's Auto Salvage in Sebring is the first and last stop you need to make. We've been in the auto salvage business for over 25 years and have over 40 acres of parts inventory. Individuals and dealers alike will find our warehouses stocked full of late model auto and truck parts. Jim's Auto Salvage delivers daily to businesses throughout Central Florida. Save your money. Why buy new when used will do just fine. Come see us soon at Jim's Auto Salvage and Jim's Import Auto Salvage, both serving you in Sebring. This weekend, the Manatee Civic Center becomes the Manatee Chevy Center. It's a special Chevy Sailathon. Camaros, Prisms, Cavaliers, even Corvettes. $95 down, $95 a month. Blazers, pickups, Luminas, $95 down, $95 a month. Some Chevys will sell below invoice. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Chevy's special Sailathon at the Manatee Chevy Center. I need coffee. Coffee, coffee. It's Jerry. He runs the Super 8 Motel. He's like all their people, friendly and helpful. Can't be a relative. <laughs> Super 8. Super people, super prices at over a thousand locations nationwide. The most comprehensive racing highlight show on TV, RPM Tonight. The show will include highlights tonight from the Formula One race held in Portugal. Our race here at Martinsville, plus features and interviews. That's tonight at 8 o'clock on ESPN2 RPM Tonight. 
Well, I'm Bob Jenkins, and along with Benny Parsons and Ned Jarrett, and down in the pits, Jerry, John, and Bill, we are waiting for the rain to lessen up so we can get going again with this uh, Goodies 500. And as John indicated a few minutes ago, it doesn't look too bad as far as the radar is concerned, just a passing shower. I don't quite understand it. Yeah, it's not raining here. No, I, we're perfectly dry. It, I was beginning to wonder when you were going to introduce us. Oh, well, you need no introduction. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. I'm Benny. This is Bob and Ned over there. Hey. And Jerry, and uh, he's down in the pit. Uh, Jerry's down there with who? With Richard, Richard Childress. Childress. A more famous person. A more famous person. No, no one's more famous than you guys, particularly when it comes to eating, right, Benny? Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're with Richard Childress, and Richard, a uh, lot of speculation as to who you may name as crew chief next year. That's a very important position. How close are you getting? Well, we're getting real close. Dale and I were together all last week. We talked about it some, and we're going to meet this week and uh, probably make a final decision this week. We pretty well know the direction we want to go. A lot of stuff we need to finalize. You and Dale went hunting last week, spent a lot of time together. Is the decision really, is it a lot depend on what Dale wants to do? Well, it, it's going to be a whole team decision, but it has to be someone Dale feels real comfortable about working with. All right, so the decision, you say the next couple of weeks you should know, next week or two? Yeah, I think we'll be able to announce something hopefully in the next two weeks. Oh, uh, they're getting very, very close, and that's going to be a critical part. Someone who can communicate with the driver, and Benny Parsons and Ned Jarrett, you guys probably know the best. That's the critical element of communication between the driver and a crew chief. Jerry, how true that is, knowing what the driver is saying, and then going to the race car and putting and applying that to the race car. And, you know, I, I would think that Childress and Earnhardt might take someone from inside the organization. Then. Well, I'm sure they've been looking very hard. They have a, a very strong team there, have a lot of depth in that team, and it would not surprise me to see them take someone within the organization. By the way, last Thursday was Richard Childress' 50th birthday. Happy birthday, Richard. Now let's check some of the other news that has popped up here during the weekend. Morgan Shepard is out of the 21 car at the end of this year. Hut Strickland has signed a three-year deal with the Stavola brothers. And he was very, very happy about that. I saw him down the golf tournament on Thursday. He had just signed that on Wednesday night. Michael Waltrip uh, was, uh, has left, will be leaving the Pennzoil ride at the end of this season. That was a mutual decision by he and the owner Chuck Ryder and uh, some speculation has been that Johnny Benson might go in that car. There's been no confirmation on that yet. This week, Barry Dotson announced, I guess, that uh, Dover, he'd be leaving the 42 car at the end of the season. Well, this week, on Tuesday, Barry left the 42 car along with Jim Long and Mike Forts. All three of those fellows are gone from the Sabatis team. And we do have at least three drivers that have re-upped with their current owners and will be back again in 96. Bobby Hamilton with King Richard Petty, Derek Cope with Bobby Allison, and Bobby Labonte has re-signed a deal with Joe Gibbs, and it apparently is for five years. Five years. How about that? I think that was an extension of a contract he signed. I think a two-year deal when he originally went in there. And now uh, Joe Gibbs likes what he sees and uh, has extended through the year 2000, both Bobby Labonte and the crew chief, Jimmy Maycar. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like everybody is getting their tarps up off pit road, and it appears as if we may be ready to go back to racing. We'll tell you when we come back. Your car's engine was made for the open road. But that's not where it is, day in and day out. Stop and go driving can kill an engine by creating deposits and wear that rob performance and shorten engine life. That's why you need the added protection of TM8, a new engine treatment from Valvoline. TM8 coats moving parts with eight friction-fighting ingredients, including Teflon. So no matter where you are, your engine will run just like it's on the open road. TM8 from Valvoline. Because driving is more stop than go. Football can be exciting. But truck football? Now that's a rush. <laughs> so if you're going to tackle it, you better get a hold of the right equipment. A 1995 Ford Ranger 4x4. Red 39! Complete with switch-on four-wheel drive, new four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a whopping four-liter V6. So get a Ford Ranger 4x4 and play truck football. How am I going to spike this thing? <laughs> okay. Listen, some of you hounds are getting all turned around dealing with the opposite sex. It's real simple. Be your own dog. And if that ain't good enough for her, 
she ain't good enough for you. Yeah, How you doing, ladies? <laughs> of course, it's easy for me to say. Red Dog Beer. Bold yet smooth, easy to drink. Red Dog. I was born beautiful. Mm. Nobody undersells Western Auto on name brands. To make sure, we price check the competition daily. We even offer a low price guarantee. Get a great deal on Prestone antifreeze and coolant. Buy two gallons and get a free Fram oil filter and up to four quarts of oil. Hey, for an unbeatable deal on Prestone, get serious. Get Western Auto. Western Auto, no stranger to these parts. The green is out here at Martinsville. We're back to racing after a brief interruption because of rain. Dale Earnhardt continues to be the leader of the race. Rusty Wallace running second, then Sterling Marlin, Jeff Gordon, and Bobby Labonte. Several cars have lost laps. Uh, Hut Strickland is down a lap, so is Mike Wallace, Todd Bodine, Lake Speed, Terry Labonte, and the 23 car is three laps down. And our scoreboard is showing the 28 car of Dale Jarrett a lap down, but he is not. Yeah, Terry Labonte uh, is, is not a lap down either. Terry is up in the sixth position. Okay. And Todd Bodine comes back into the pits. He, he was a lap down, and he he lost a lap during the caution Todd Bodine did, and now he's back into the pits in the Factory Stories of America, Ford number 75. And we can see they're pulling the fender off the right front tire, so he evidently has made contact with another car, and that's the reason he's in the pits. Bodine back out onto the racetrack. He'll be using the acceleration lane that is uh, built at both ends of the racetrack, allowing the cars to uh, get up to speed, but not actually going on to the racetrack. And that is brand new here at the Martinsville Speedway. First time it's been used. Now Rusty Wallace begins to close in on Dale Earnhardt. Dale had about a half a straightaway advantage before we went caution, but now Wallace is within two, three car lengths. And just like Ned Jarrett talked about just a few seconds ago, the two car, Rusty Wallace, folks, has won three races in a row here at the Martinsville Speedway. Marlin and Jeff Gordon running together. Here's Cope and Kenny Schrader doing battle. Jeff Schrader has a good car here. He has passed several cars, including Dale Jarrett and Ricky Rudd. Passed Rudd on the outside. He passed Jeff Bodine on the outside. And uh, so that Budweiser Chevrolet is on the move. He, there it goes like this a little bit high. And Schrader stuck his nose up under there. Now he makes the pass. Now Dale Jarrett tries to go by. That on the inside. That's for the position. And our scoring has corrected itself as you watch the leaders in the upper right. Uh, Dale Jarrett is running in 15th position. Uh, Terry Labonte is 16th and Ricky Rudd is 6th. Right? Oh, no, it's Terry Labonte. Oh, Labonte, okay. Yeah. You, right. got, you got Rudd and Labonte mixed up. Turned around, okay. Yeah, okay. You're watching the battle down on the, the bottom of the screen. The up front, up at the top on the right, you see first and second, and the top ten there on the left, in the upper left. I like that, and I hope the fans do too. That's a, a graphic that they can keep up with those top ten, and it'll change as they switch positions on the racetrack. Now, you look at Rusty. He's starting to take a look on the inside. Right now, it's clear that Rusty Wallace is a little faster than Earnhardt, but passing is going to, well, I thought it was going to be a, trunk, a struggle, but it's not. Here's Rusty trying to get to the inside of Earnhardt as they go to one, and he will do so. He grabs the lead from Dale Earnhardt. Wallace becomes our second leader of the afternoon. There's Hutt Strickland right behind me. He has four new tires on. He's one of them. Here's Mike Wallace. He also is one of those drivers that lost a lap on the caution flag during the pit stop. So they have new tires, and they're trying to get back up there and get back in the lead lap. Jeff Gordon, Jeff Gordon right now is exactly where he needs to be, trying to take care of that point championship. As I said earlier, all he has to do is average a 10th place finish for the next six races, and he will win the championship regardless of what Dale Earnhardt and the others do. Dale should win every race. 
through the end of the season, and we don't average a tenth. Gordon would still win the championship. Rusty maintaining a car length advantage or so over Earnhardt. Hutt Strickland is there behind Dale, but he is a lap down. 32nd position. Well, we can see that Rusty and Earnhardt have pulled away from Sterling Marlin and Jeff Gordon quite a bit. The Lake Speed in front of Bobby Labonte, this fan car, is a lap down. Another one of those cars that was caught in the back pits, back pits and lost a lap. Now here comes a nap of field something for you. In parentheses to the right of the driver's name is their starting position. Won't be too long before Wallace will come up on Joe Nemechek, who is the last car on the lead lap in 31st position. Here's Labonte, Speed, and Jimmy Spencer running nose to tail. Now Spencer is three laps down. He made an unscheduled pit stop in, in the green flag and then lost another lap during the coffee flag. Racing along with Ted Musgrave, the Family Channel car. Jeremy Mayfield and Presley running side by side down into turn one, as are Darrell Waltrip and Kyle Petty. As a matter of fact, Waltrip and Petty made some contact coming off turn four. Sound like John Turner was in significant contact. <laughs> about the same interval between first and second now as Rusty does come up on Joe Nemechek. That's a surprise that Nemechek was really fast here yesterday in practice. Thought he had a shot at the pole, but here he is being left in the early going. He had his best career finish at Dover last week. I think, I think Nemechek has hit the wall. Look at the right side of that car the next time he comes by, but it appears to me he's flat in the right side of that car and the tires have rubbed the... Uh, Yes, he has yeah, brushed the wall yeah, yeah. with both tires on the right side. See the yeah. concrete, the cement on the... Yeah. Yep. Bill, what's the story? Well, your guys are right. Uh, he tagged the wall just about 10 laps ago when he radioed to his crew. He was sorry, but he feels the rear end has been pushed over. And they've got a track bar over here waiting for Joe to come back in. But he was extremely fast. They had very high hopes for today coming off last week's finish. But early problem for Joe Nemechek and the Burger King Chevrolet. Nemechek struggles here in the early going after making contact with the wall. Still Rusty leading Dale Earnhardt, Sterling Marlin third, then Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte. We've completed 73 of the 500 laps at Martinsville. Attention sports fans, when you need to score on any game, call scores coast to coast. Sports scores are updated every five minutes. You also get current weather and injury reports, as well as trends on every game. And best of all, they're absolutely free on a recorded message. Scores, weather, injuries, trends, and more right now for free. In the Tampa area, call 813-620-2121. Quick, someone just scored. Call scores, coast to coast. It's the biggest RV sales event of the year. At Harbison Swanston RV Sales in Clearwater, it's our 11th annual September Buyer's Day sale. Every 95 model in our inventory is drastically reduced to make room for the 96s. And the buy of the year is this 96 Coachman Catalina for only $3.99 down and $3.99 a month. That's right, $3.99 down and $3.99 a month. But don't delay. It's for a limited time only at Harbison Swanston RV Sales, U.S. Highway 19 in Clearwater. This is my baby. I feed her, nurture her, and I guide her. Believe me. At 130 miles an hour when she starts to whine, I'm a real mother.
ESPN Speed World today at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia for the Goodies 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race, which is 79 laps old. The leader is Rusty Wallace. Second position is Dale Earnhardt, as now Wallace begins to lap some of the slower traffic. Here's car, one car that he has lapped. Jeremy Mayfield was running in 25th position, but ran into a bit of a problem over in turn number two a few laps ago, and this was the result. We see him going into turn number one there, Kyle Petty, following Kyle in 42, and a little bit of a tap from Kyle as they start off the turn, and around goes Jeremy Mayfield. The car number 22 of Ward Burton gets down on the grass. Morgan Shepard gets by on the outside. No caution. Continue to race. Let's watch from inside Morgan Shepard's car, the Citgo 4 Thunderbird, the in-car camera. contact with Ford Burton and there's a damage on the 98 car. Yeah, Kyle tried to run over the dog. <laughs> so it's put Jeremy back in 29th position and one lap down. That is a battle there for, for position between Mayfield and Brett Bodine for 29th. There's your third place car, the four car, Sterling Marlin, the Kodak Film Chevrolet, the DuPont Chevy. Uh, Jeff Gordon is in fourth place right now. Well, things could be working just better for Jeff Gordon. There's something hanging down from Kyle Petty's car. That's a wrench, isn't it? Whatever it, whatever uh, it was, it left. It's, it's not there anymore. It may be a piece of tubing that uh, the braces to the uh, rear bumper. It probably is a, a brace to uh, keep the sheet metal, hold yeah. the sheet metal out there. When it fell off the car, it went... Oh, clear. Rusty Spud! And has contact with Ward Burton. All sorts of problems up in turn number four. Rusty Spud, the caution is out. Wow, he's got a lot of damage to the right side of that car, Rusty Wallace does. Wow, now that's a turn of events, isn't it? No kidding. He had been trying for a number of laps to get around the Ford Burton. Don't know if that had anything to do with his spin or not. Well, let's see. Okay, down on the inside of Ward, going into turn three. And, yeah, gets a little oh, bit yeah. of a tap from Ward Burton, and around he goes. And then when he comes up the racetrack, they make pretty heavy contact right there. Mm -hmm. Almost gets Hut Strickland when Rusty comes oh. down across the track. Damn, is that close? Well, all the cars in the pits now. Now let's see how they change. Remember, only two impact wrenches. Rusty's car is down. Now the Jackman going around. Now these cars have to go around us. Earnhardt's guy, Jack is down. Baby Smith takes it around. You see the four car already working on the left side. Rusty moving. 21-1. Great hit stop by Rusty Wallace. He's come back out in second place. Wow, so no real uh, harm as far as position for Rusty Wallace during that little incident with Ward Burton, but is the car damaged? Is he got to come back in? Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Yeah. Is Rusty Wallace going to come back in to work on the car? Yeah. Yes, he is, because the, the quarter pound is rubbing the tire. He's got to come back in. Yeah, he chose not to that time, but yeah, it is definitely rubbing on the right rear. Probably going to catch up to the field before he comes in to have more time. There's the replay again as Ward Burton gets into the back of Rusty coming off of turn four. And yeah, there's where the damage was done to his car when they hit the second time. Rusty Wallace has already two short track wins this year here at Martinsville and at Richmond. 11 short track wins in the last 25. Jerry Punch. Just to show you how everything is relative, you saw how quick Rusty's pit crew was working a moment ago with the new rules. Their pit stop was 20 seconds even here in the pits, and they were one of the first cars out. Now Rusty is back in the pits, and Todd Perrin and company are going to take the trusty old baseball bat to the right rear fender. They put the bat in the tire, they roll the car forward, and as the bat rolls, it actually flies the fender away from the tire. They're rolling, they're rolling, rolling, the tire is nice and clear. And now they come momentarily and tell him to go. And the green flag is going to be waved when the cars come off the corner. 
isn't it? No, I'm sorry. I thought the light was out on top of well, the face. It, it is, is but they're still not going green until, well, not even an indication that they'll be going green next time. That is unusual that the light would be out. So. No caution on the pace car, but we do remain under caution because of Rusty Wallace's spin in turn four. America's most complete source of auto parts, a national warranty program, and customer service only Napa can give. No wonder more people trust Napa to keep their vehicles running. We keep America running. We keep America running. Just how long does a car battery last? About this much time is put into most batteries. But AC Delco puts in more time, so our batteries last over 20% longer. Well, now there's the new Delco Freedom 84, our longest-lasting battery ever. We put in seven years of guaranteed starts, making it the granddaddy of all batteries. Hey, my watch! In these mountains, you need a tough truck. Dave Ashley, search and rescue volunteer. Trails, I tend to make my own. It's one torture test after another. But the people I'm looking for depend on someone to find them. Well, I depend on something too. My Ford F-Series. How do you learn a job like this? Let's just say I drive something tougher than a golf cart on the weekends. Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. NASCAR's Winston Cup Championship is up for grabs. The final six races of the year, and we're covering them before you on ESPN Speed World today at Martinsville, Virginia, for the Goodies 500, just about to go back to green during the pit stops. Uh, the 43 car of Bobby Hamilton ran into a tire on pit road and did some damage to the front end. There's King Richard Petty as he looks on to his driver, who had an impressive second-place finish at Dover and Rusty Wallace several times and he comes very close each time to losing a lap but hasn't yet <laughs> what they're having to do is take the right rear tire off they come in to work on the damage to the right rear quarter panel as they would see the front end damage on the STP Pontiac with Bobby Hamilton where he hit that tire on pit road but Rusty Wallace's crew only has a few seconds to work on that car they take that right rear tire off knock as much of that sheet metal away as they possibly can and then come back in the next time and do that same thing all over again but this time he isn't coming back in so apparently they feel that they got it fixed and he and Ward Burton apparently are talking to each other on the racetrack. I'm not sure how friendly that conversation was. <laughs> Hard to imagine what they can see in hand gestures. I guess they've got the drift, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you can say quite a lot. <laughs> okay, now we're getting the indication that there will be one more lap to go and then the green flag looks like the 29 car of steve grissom may be leading did he not make a pit stop bill what's what's the deal tire stop two tire stop for steve grissom he put on two right side tires and uh, beat everybody out now that time a lot of guys just took two tires came back in and then put on the two left side tires a handful of guys took four at once they were having a little trouble with a pace car speed earlier let's go to john kernan well, Bill, on my end of pit road over here on the front stretch, I found only three teams that elected to take on right side tires only. Those were the cars of Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bodine, and Derek Cope. A two-tire change for them. And the pace car pulls off the racetrack. We're set to go back to green on lap number 95. Now, Hutch Rickman is technically in the lead lap. See, he was up there right behind the leaders before this caution came out, so he stayed out there to try to uh, get back in the lead lap, and he is that way right now. Mike Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield also getting a lap back at the moment. Exactly. Oh, some contact between the 26 and 98. And then Jeremy, now here goes Earnhardt trying to take the lead on the outside of Steve Christian. Earnhardt in the three car. And he does not make it. He loses ground up there. Sure did. Lost a couple of uh, car links. Chris is putting Mayfield. 
field another la a lap down again, or trying to. And I'll remind you again that when these tires are cool, they don't adhere very well. They have to run them a few laps before they really get to feeling good to the drivers, get some heat in them. That's a little different from most racetracks that we go to, but that's the case here. There's Jeff Gordon, followed by Sterling Marlin, and the five car of Terry Labonte. Jeff Gordon goes to the outside of Jeremy Mayfield, and Jeremy very, very loose, and Gordon about to lose second place, or third place, I guess that is. Sterling Marlin right behind him. is only the second race that Steve Wilson has led this year. He did lead four laps at the Darlington race in the spring in March. Good battle going on here between Jeff Gordon and Sterling Marlin for third spot. And Terry Labonte also has joined in. And now we see Earnhardt trying to work to the inside of Grissom. Does at the end of the back stretch. Takes the lead. Dale Earnhardt back in front. We can see a slight damage to the nose of the Heineke Chevrolet, Steve Grissom's car. Evidently made contact with someone. You see the numbers changing down our scoring pylon there in the upper left. That's because every time there is a change for position on the top ten, we will show it to you. It doesn't necessarily have to be after they cross the line. One hundred one laps have been completed. We got three ninety nine to go. Now we see Rusty Wallace trying to get back to the front. He's on the outside of Jeff Burton, the Rebecca's car. So heavy traffic he has to worry about, including the 22 again. I doubt we'll see much of anything happen there before Burton's going to stay down there out of the way. Rusty Wallace and his crew regarding how the car is handling. But it doesn't appear to be doing too badly after that spin up in turn four. And as we suspected, uh, Ward Burton gives Rusty plenty of room. While we watch a Napa field summary, here's more from Dr. Jerry Punch. Bob, the concern with Rusty Wallace and crew right now is not the outside right rear fender, it's actually the inside fender. Now, they were able to move the outside fender away by using the ball back. So at least they made so many good stops, they came in and kept taking that right rear tire off, and the inside fender well kept falling down on top of the tire. That's their primary concern. They even have their spotter now looking for any semblance of smoke off that car because the right rear fender isn't rubbing on the outside, it may be the inside that can create a problem. Here goes Sterling Marlin around Jeff Gordon, trying to take over the third position. And they might create a little bit of paint there. And Sterling takes over the third position. Here's Terry Labonte. He wants to come up there, too. Jeff Gordon has been running a higher line, Benny, here than uh, even before that pit stop. He was running a higher line than most. And that opens that inside up for those whose cars are handling well down on the inside. They could drive right on by without too much problem. And you really wonder exactly why he's doing that, Dan. I might be trying to save the brakes a little bit. Maybe that's just where the car feels good up there. Yep. Mark Martin and Dick Triple. Dick Triple, the 15 of Water Gear Car. Mark Martin, Valvoline Ford. 12 car of Derry Cope was able to pass Trickle just a couple of laps ago, so that puts uh, Derry Cope into the sixth position. Yep. Trickle seven, Martin eight, Jeff Bodine is ninth, and Bill Elliott running ten. Dick Trickle started the race from 25th position. He's made a nice movement up to 7th. I think he made the, a lot of that move in the pit stop, Bob. 
uh, he might have been one of those that only took on two tires and uh, got some good track position, but it might be costing him a little bit right now on the racetrack. Here's a battle for second now between Steve Grissom in 29 and Sterling Marlin in number four. And Earnhardt is just having trouble getting by Mike Wallace in the Howling Meyer star. Mike trying his best to on that lead lap. He's giving Earnhardt the outside, but if the car's not working good out there, that's not uh, maybe exactly what he would like to have. Sterling Marlin diving down to the inside of Grissom. That's the battle for second place. Oh, Wallace got loose and Earnhardt got by. There we go. And Steve Grissom still maintains second place, but here comes Sterling once again. And Labonte and Gordon. And they're they're coming up on those lap cars that Earnhardt has trouble getting around. Earnhardt will be gone while they try to get around those. Jeff trying to go to the outside of Terry. Report on Jeff Gordon from Dr. Punch. Hey guys, we reported earlier that Jeff Gordon's car number 24 was very, very loose. After that pit run, Ray Everham and crew put one round of fight in the car to try to tighten it up. It helped him only minimally. Jeff is out there the car. It's still quite loose, and that's why he's running the upper groove so he doesn't bind the car up and take a chance on spinning it out. Falling back to fifth position, Jeff Gordon has. As Dale Earnhardt has command of this event, as we've completed 115 of the 500 laps. We'll be right back. Oh. I have to get up early tomorrow. Yeah, me too. Well, good night, Lisa. Good night. Miller Light Ice, for the taste that goes all out when you're out. I would have been here earlier, but I had to drop off. Lisa? Miller Light Ice, the night is young. A lot of folks in Johnson City, Tennessee will tell you when you need a part for your car, go to AutoZone. The parts are top quality, the prices are low, and the people are helpful, like Gary Jennings. You see, when it comes to auto parts, folks will tell you Gary really knows his stuff. Oh, sure, they know their other parts stores in town, but when it comes to getting the right part, the right price, and good advice from folks like Gary, there's just no place better than AutoZone. On the road again Going places that I've never been Seeing things that I may never see again I can't wait to get on the road again. And when you get on the road again, make sure you do it on General's. Because General has the right tires for all the roads you ride. Sooner or later, you'll own General's. I never park up front in a parking lot. That's how door dings happen. The towels bug my wife. She calls me a tightwad, but I'm not a tightwad. I, I just don't want to scratch the upholstery. You no, know, if people took care of their cars, uh, they wouldn't have to keep buying new ones. Pure oil now. I change my own oil. I uh, use pure later filters. Pure oil later. I have to watch the dog up there. Town legends live on pure later. Oh, look, a nickel. Our live coverage of Goodies 500. Stay tuned for Shop Talk featuring Jeff Gordon. Not only an opportunity to buy some of his merchandise, but a very interesting conversation with the young man who might become the champion of NASCAR Winston Cup in 1995. Shop Talk, that's the one that was supposed to air after Darlington that did not because it ran long. So join us after this race for that one. There is the pace center at the moment, Dale Earnhardt. And what a huge lead he has. Look, four and a half seconds over Sterling Marlin. And then Labonte and Gordon, but Earnhardt more than a straightaway in these cars, isn't he, Dan? Yeah, and Sterling has not been able to get by all of those lap cars that we saw Earnhardt having trouble. In fact, the 90 car right there is one Earnhardt had a lot of trouble getting around. 
around, and now Sterling just now moving up on him, trying to get around. And it looks like he'll be able to, well, I think so. Yeah, he'd made that prediction. And uh, so they've still got Jeremy Mayfield is still way up in front of them. Now, Jerry Colt, the main and tail straight R part, is in fifth place. I think that's interesting. He's one of those drivers that only took on two tires during that pit stop. He was struggling before then. A number of cars had passed him. And here he is with those two tires. Might have been just what his chassis needed on that straight arrow board. And he's just moving right along. Eric started 16th. He moved up to 13th on lap 44. Now is in the top five. John Kernan. Well, Bob, Jerry told me earlier today, he said, you know, well, the caution flag is coming out. Maybe I guess the 29 car Steve Bliss on the problem. And uh, maybe we can get back to Derek Koch's story. I'm sure since they changed only right side tires to pass time, they would probably come in this time and take on four tires. So we'll try and get the uh, Derek Koch thing in a little bit later, guys. Meanwhile, the caution does come out because of Steve Grissom's problem in turns one and two. Well, what in the world? I don't know what's wrong with that car. It's not an engine. Maybe it's a brake. Well, let's see. We'll replay what happened here. Acts like the brakes blew a seal on the brake or something. He goes down the corner, and he's on the brakes hard there in the car, and the wheel starts smoking. I, I believe he might have broke, blown a seal in the caliper. He was shot right out of the pack and up almost to the wall, and it looks like it's the left front, Ben, is the yep. one that uh, had the problem. Dale All the cars is in, as is everybody else on the lead lap. Jerry? Very busy car in the pit road, Earnhardt and Gordon, and all the cars in the lead lap, you say, in for service. Now, once again, only two air ridges, and you cannot, you cannot throw the air ridge. Look for the gun, turn to the co pit. Right side's already on, left side's going on, as Rick Masson leads that two-tire change. It's a four-tire change for Derek Cope. He's locked in by Kenny Schrader, and now Cope is away. Let's go back to the back bench of Bill Weber. Some slight damage on the left side of the Monica Chevrolet. They're going to put on two left side tires. They've already added fuel. Now they look under the left front rear well. Looking to see if there's any additional damage from Steve Fisher on the track. Behind him, it's four tires for Dick Trickle, who only took two tires last run out. He follows Ricky Craven and the eight car back out of the track. The 29 car still sits on this row. They give a hammer to the man under the wheel, banging away at the sheet metal, trying to straighten the front left side of the car. And Steve Grissom, who had a quick pit stop with just two tires earlier is going to sit here for a while while his team continues to work on the left side of his car. Ricky Rudd is in, John. Well, we should say back in the right side tires. This time he'll come into the attention of Bill Engel and the crew. He took on left side tires and he is headed down pit road. Now Dale Jarrett and John Andretti did not stop. So Dale Jarrett is leading the race. John Andretti is in second place. Mark Martin beat everybody out who did stop, so he's in third place. Bill Elliott, with a great pit stop, is in the fourth position. Earnhardt came out in fifth. Let's take a look at pit exit here. The 24, I think, only changed right size, but he can't get out. He's blocked in by Earnhardt, and he, when he did pull out, he almost ran into his teammate, <laughs> Terry Labonte. Boy, he really did. Very close. Jerry? And when it calls the 24 only changed right side tires, he lost an advantage and he couldn't get out behind the earth. He kept he had to pull forward, back up, pull forward, back up. And by the time he finally got around Earnhardt, Earnhardt was leaving and he almost got tagged by his teammate. But because he couldn't get out of his pit box, it cost him an extra four and a half to five seconds and he only got right side tires. Here's another look at it. There's Earnhardt stopped just ahead of Jeff who can't get out. There, once again, he can't get out. He has to wait till Earnhardt leaves, and then when he does pull out, as you mentioned, then he almost pulled out in front of his teammate, Terry Labonte, but fortunately they were heads up. And Rusty Wallace picked up about six or seven spots in that pit stop. Rusty Wallace started back about 25th, 26th on the last restart. He right now is running in ninth place. And Bill Weber has an update on Joe Nemechek. 
Well, Joe Nemechek is behind the wall. The team had the Burger King Monte Carlo up on jacks, changing the rear track bar and trying to straighten the rear wheel assembly. He significantly flattened the right side of that car. This team had tested here. They were really optimistic, as Ned and Benny had spoken about earlier. They thought they'd qualify in the top five. That went out the window when we were rained out. And then an early problem for him here, getting into the wall, coming off the turn two. Joe still sits behind the wall, a lengthy stop for his Burger King Monte Carlo off the throne finish last week at Dover. 132 laps completed. The green is back out. Dale Jarrett is the leader of the race. John Andretti second, then Martin Elliott and Earnhardt, then Gordon. And a couple of cars fighting to uh, get back laps. Louis Spencer has gotten back one of his at the moment. He still, however, is uh, two Ooh, laps down. Three of rest here. Let's see what's going to happen. That can't work. Mark Martin knows that, and he backs off. Very smart on Mark Martin's part. And we see Mark Martin and Bill Elliott side by side. That's Elliott in the McDonald's board. I think uh, Mark and Elliott only took home two tires. But as we saw on the other caution pit stops, they were able to, uh, two tires seem to work okay for some cars. And with their going by Elliott, there goes Earnhardt upon the outside. Mark pulls up on the outside of Andretti, who did not stop, as Ned pointed out just a moment ago. And those right side, new right side, seem to be a little bit better. Is that left front rubbing on Mark's car? I couldn't see it. Andretti is, uh, once again, uh, not getting fresh tires. Seems, seems not to be working that well for Andretti. And we see some damage to the left front of his car, and yeah. Made some contact with someone, knocked the fender in on the tire, and there's a little tie there, Mark. How you today? <laughs> that, of course, is the black three of Earnhardt, who now goes to the inside of Mark. In the battle for second position, Earnhardt has it. Now, Bill Elliott is one that maybe if those two tire changes is hurting him, he's going backwards. Jeremy Mayfield, by the way, has also unlapped himself. He's now back on the lead lap and really pulling away from uh, Jared and Earnhardt. Here's Wallace now to the outside of John Andretti. And that he's trying to take over seven spots. So well, it's been a tough afternoon already for Rusty, but he is not down by any means. Started in sixth position has led 22 laps. Here are the nails going at it. <laughs> and Earnhardt, it appears, is going to get the lead. Yeah, it's no question he'll do it. Jarrett's car don't seem to be working too good until after he runs about 10 or 12 laps. And the fact that he didn't get any fresh tires that time probably added to that problem. But after he gets going for 10 or 12 laps, well, then the car seems to run pretty good. And John Kernan has more on Dale. Well, I tell you, Ned, you're very observant. Larry McReynolds said that reason they did not pit, they had only run 30 laps on that set of tires and that they needed 10 to 12 laps once they go back to racing for the tires to get heated up and to stick to the track. But Larry also told me he was very shocked that as many cars pitted as they did. Now Rusty Wallace takes a position away from Jeff Gordon, and he moves to sixth. By the way, while we're talking about the 28 uh, team here very briefly, those of you who have not uh, followed what's gone on in the last 48 hours, yesterday's truck race here at Martinsville was rained out. That was supposed to be the racing return of Ernie Irvin. He will make it next Saturday at the truck race in North Wilkesboro and then compete in the Winston Cup race, hopefully next uh, week at North Wilkesboro. Jerry has more on this tire rub on uh, Mark Martin's car. I just asked Steve Mill uh, what happened to Winnie Bennett. He said, I don't know. So when we changed tires about 10 laps ago with the cautious like it was fine. So apparently we got uh, got somebody on the restart and said, you know, it wouldn't make us real mad if the yellow came out. There's Sterling Marlin getting to the inside of 
Mark now. Mark Cliff coming off the turn two. I mean, David Marlin, he had a good run coming off the turn, so he was able to dip down the inside. Now Terry Lelati will take advantage of that inside cruise. And Rusty Wallace trying to figure out which way he's going now. He figures it out very quickly. He'll go to the inside, but no, he's not going to go three abreast. He wanted to, but he said, that's not smart. We'll wreck all three of us, so he just backed off and follows Terry right on through on the inside. Now the leader Earnhardt is still he's behind Mike Wallace once again in the Heidegg Myers car and that is helping Rusty Wallace and the rest of these cars because he's right now Earnhardt is not running around the racetrack as fast as that good red Chevrolet will run because the Heidegg Myers cars hold him up just a little bit but Mike is trying his best to get back in the lead lap well, he was, he yeah he's in the lead lap and trying to stay there and Earnhardt trying to put him the left down <laughs> well, maybe uh, yeah, he could, Mike could use a caution now, but he doesn't want to be it. But maybe he's thinking about his brother back there too, trying to help him out a little bit. He knows that Rusty's coming up through the field. Marlon and Labonte. And third and fourth is Jack Roush. Looks on the Goodies 500 at Martinsville. We'll take a break and be back in a moment. Football can be exciting, but truck football? Now that's a rush. <laughs> so if you're going to tackle it, you better get a hold of the right equipment. A 1995 Ford Ranger 4x4. Red 39! Complete with switch-on four-wheel drive, new four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a whopping four-liter V6. So get a Ford Ranger 4x4 and play truck football. How am I going to spike this thing? <laughs> Your car's engine was made for the open road, but that's not where it is day in and day out. Stop and go driving can kill an engine by creating deposits and wear that rob performance and shorten engine life. That's why you need the added protection of TM8, a new engine treatment from Valvoline. TM8 coats moving parts with eight friction fighting ingredients, including Teflon. So no matter where you are, your engine will run just like it's on the open road. TM8 from Valvoline, because driving is more stop than go. You know, a lot of people who work on their cars will only shop at AutoZone. They depend on us for the best quality parts and low prices every day. They come in, get what they need, and then get back to work. Because you see, they believe if you want the job done right, you do it yourself. Well, at AutoZone, we couldn't agree more. Because when you take the time and the effort to work on your car yourself, you ought to be choosy about where you shop. We just thank you for choosing AutoZone. at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. Dale Earnhardt still trying to put Mike Wallace a lap down, and while he has been trying, Sterling Marlin has closed in to make it a battle up front. And it's also helped Rusty Wallace. There we see Terry Labonte. He's the third-place car, but Rusty Wallace is the fourth-place car. There he is. He was three-quarters of a lap down about 50 laps ago, and now he's, what's that, five car lengths? Ooh, and Sterling Marlin and Mike Wallace make contact. Coming off turn four. So there's second, third, fourth, Marlon Labonte and Rusty. Dale Jarrett is back in fifth and Jeff Gordon is sixth. I talked earlier about the 98 car of Jeremy Mayfield who was able to get a lap back earlier and look, he has really picked up uh, quite a bit of racetrack, almost a full straightaway. Yeah, almost a third of a lap. And also Jimmy Spencer. Here we see Spencer coming into the picture. He's pulled that far ahead of Earnhardt. And Jimmy is still two laps down, but nevertheless, he got back one of them. Mayfield is in 26th. He is the last car on the lead lap. Here's an auto light field summary for you, showing you where your driver is running right now. And of course, his starting position in parentheses. Rick Mass started 18th up to ninth spot. Yep. This racetrack is the closest one to the home of Rick Mast up in Rock Ridge County, Virginia, around Lexington. This is the battle for 12th position that you're showing below the Auto Light Field summary. Jeff Andretti, or rather uh, John Andretti and Jeff Bodine. 
Uh, Jeff Bodine, the Exide car, has certainly had some success at this racetrack. And it's been up in turn three. We will Elton. have a caution. Elton Sawyer in the Hooters car. You see some damage to the left rear of the Hooters car. Elton was still in the lead lap, but he has now gone a lap down. And if the engine is, is acts like it won't start, hmm, that can be bad news. He has to wait for the wrecker to come push him and get it started, as it looks like is going to happen. He's on the acceleration lane between turns three and four. Here's a replay. Let's see what happens. There you see that's Robert Presley. He's trying to dive on the inside of Presley, and Presley comes down the hill, and Robert spins, and the 26 car runs in the back of the 27 and loops him around, and the 22 goes field goal, three points. <laughs> And Morgan Shepard gets to drive through another wreck. Let's take a look from his roof cam. Oh, man! <laughs> Dale Jarrett has come in for a pit stop, John. Possibly four tire change. The chassis adjustment takes just a little bit of bite out of the car. A little bit tight. Dale Jarrett gets his service and goes from second place and uh, I didn't see any, any other cars here on the front stretch pit, so that'll put him back. He's lost a lot of track positions. Let's go back to John Andretti's pit and Bill Weber. And John Andretti rolls into the last pit here on the back stretch. The right side tire is going on, fuel going in. This team did not pit during the last caution. And now there's an official standing in front of the car, and they are holding John Andretti. So the team's going to go around, put on the left side tires. Just behind him, Darrell Waltrip's crew expected him to come in. Darrell did not come in. Holding Andretti here in the pit. He for one lap. For one lap. And they're going to talk to crew chief Tim Brewer or Jerry Punch. They're going to penalize John Andretti one lap, Bill, because they said he moved up to pit. He moved up and passed cars to come on to pit road. It's what NASCAR is saying over here. Therefore, they're going to hold him a lap in the back pit. Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> Cost me a great deal. caution of the afternoon. This because of an incident down in turn number three involving Elton Sawyer, among others. As things are changing, we're changing to come see it all. Wall to wall, it's here for you at Electric Avenue. Yeah, things are changing at Montgomery into Rooms and More Montgomery Ward this weekend. It's the only place you'll find all four top mattress brands at unbeatably low prices, guaranteed. Like this Serta Perfect Sleeper Kensington Queen set for just $3.99. Now that's a cushy deal. America's first minivan with a left side door is here at Perkins Chrysler Plymouth G. Beagle. The all-new 1996 Plymouth Grand Voyager and Town & Country open up a whole new world of convenience and accessibility. Your family can easily enter from both sides. See the new minivan and the way all of the sales and service people at Perkins are trained to make sure you're delighted with our dealership. So hurry in today and make your next family edition a new minivan from Perkins, Chrysler, Plymouth, Jeep Eagle, and Bang King. Great weekend, don't you? Well, I'm looking forward Great to it. Oh, jeez. Hey, how are you guys able to talk about every game on prime time? You can't watch every game. Well, Art, we got a room with 13 TVs where all the games are on at the same time. 13 TVs, 13 TVs, 13 TVs. Art, 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 Art. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 all right. I'm all right. Good, yeah. good. Hey, how come you guys never have me over to your house on Sunday? ESPN Speed World today in Marksville Speedway, Virginia for the Goodies 500. Being brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. By Firestone, America's tire since 1900. And by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. Still under caution, up uh, in turn number three, still the car of Elton Sawyer rests on the uh, acceleration lane. They haven't gotten the car off of there yet, and there was a bit of a fire that broke out in the left front of that car around the uh, brake area, but it's out now, and we just wait now for the restart. And 
Bill Weber is with Tim Brewer. Tim, obviously they held you back here, apparently saying John Pash's car is coming into the pits. Well, they're saying we, uh... They're saying we progressed our position on pit road. You know, when he fell down on pit road, he never passed the pace car. He stayed even with the pace car and come on around to our pits. But they say he uh, progressed his position. I don't know how the hell they figure that, but, you know, their math and mine doesn't coincide sometimes. <laughs> There's Michael Kratovis right beside Tim, the owner of the car. And, of course, that's John Andretti's car that we're talking yep. about that was held a lap. Let's, Let's see. see if I can talk to Ward Burton in the 22 car. Ward, this is Benny Parsons up at ESPN. You got me? All right, this one, Benny. A little bit of contact with the two car a little bit earlier on. Did, did you hurt your car? No, I don't think so. Didn't knock a toe in out in for anything. Uh, I didn't mean to do that to Rusty. Um, I'm just running hard, trying to stay in the lead lap. Looks like he got a little loose or something. Well, it looks like he's going to be okay because he's right now running in four spots. All right, well, I'm glad he recovered from it. Uh, just racing hard, trying to stay in the lead lap. All right, good luck. Ward now getting his position for the restart. He is a lap down in 30th spot. There are still 24 cars on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt, the leader of the race, as they get set for green once again. Marlon, Labonte, Wallace, Gordon, Martin, Elliott, Mast. Here's the green flag. We're back to racing. And Earnhardt dives to the inside, gets that position, and Sterling Marlin gets hung on the outside. There goes... Andretti, John Andretti, trying to get on the inside of Earnhardt, can't do it. Remember, Earnhardt and Andretti has pressure tires, then does Earnhardt. Mike Wallace is going to lose there. And Andretti takes a look on the inside of Earnhardt, can't quite make it. Boy, these, they have to tiptoe on these tires for a few laps, and then the tires are really good after that. But with this cool weather here at Martinsville, they just uh, need to get some heat in them. Oh! Oh! Sideways. Yeah. And Ward Burton is going to save it. And behind him, the nine car is spun out. Blake Speed in the spam car spun down in the corner. One of those chain reaction buildings. He's sitting on the exit of the pit road. There he sits. And it looks like the engine is stalled on the car. Oh, man. Now the car's rolling now. A tough break. Then we see Andretti, who made the half spin over there, and Lake Speed, who made the spin as well. That's something that's definitely they lost to Dale Earnhardt, and also Lake Speed lost a lap plus that. Lake was already one lap down, so let's see. He goes in, things really get jammed up up in front of him, and he gets hit from the rear by Mark Martin, and around he goes. There's Sterling Marlin, the second-place car. Tony Glover, the crew chief on the four car, the Kodak Film Shirley, told me this morning, it's a different setup than they've ever run here before in their lives. It will either be real good or real bad. <laughs> no in-between for us today. It looks like they're real good. It sure does. We talked about Ken Schrader having a brake problem. Boy, he is really off speed out on the racetrack. He's still on the lead lap, but he's the last car, and he's uh, already just after a few laps. It's less than a third of a lap going. There he is. And you can see Earnhardt coming off from turn four, coming into turn one. So Schrader's Budweiser Chevrolet definitely not performing up to speed. And he told his pit crew that his brakes were not raceable. So he just has to ride around. Michael Waltrip and Jeff Bodine. And they're 12th and 13th. Bobby Hamilton in the 43 car is running in 14th position. And Ward Burton there in the 22 is a lap down in 29. Michael Walter.
factor of ninth in the Winston Cup points coming in. Trying to make the stage of the Waldorf Astoria in New York the first weekend of December. Which, of course, we will televise live for you once again on ESPN. That's our Winston Cup Awards Banquet. All lined up there. And Ted Musgrave's car looking back on Bobby Lavani. I never see Kenny Schrader has been let now, Ned. Yeah, his uh, brake problems are just uh, too much for him to race at full speed, so he just has to ride around. So now there are only 23 cars on the lead lap. Kenny Schrader's running 24th. Take a look at Morgan Shepard. Remember early in the race, we saw the brakes uh, flowing and sparking, and they are still. It does appear the rotor is as cherry red as it was at the beginning of the coach. I think right now they're getting a the rhythm, and they're not using the brakes as hard as they did at the, at the very beginning. Morgan is running in third place, one lap down. He's sort of the tail end of the pack there right now, so he probably is not using the brakes as heavy as he did. And of course, and also, right there, they're pretty strong. Yeah, it also depends on where you're running in the track and if there's traffic ahead of you or when you can just basically drive the car in without uh, anybody in front of you. Schrader now coming into the pits. He fought as long as he could out there. He was able to stop the car once he came in, but the crew is going to work on the rear of the Budweiser Chevrolet as we watch. Shepard's break situation there. We see, see uh, Ken Schrader. Let's go to the pits and John Kearney. Well, then, as they jack up the rear end, it's a problem with the rear brakes. With Kenny Schrader in here, the rear brakes can cause a lot of problems. Now, the blue chief is they, they talk things over on the radio. They're going to put him behind the wall. What we thought they might do is add some brake fluid and maybe breathe, bleed the brake line. But the, now the, the hood will come up. Maybe they are going to stay out here on the pit and work on the uh, front brakes now, I'm being told. So a bit of confusion as to where they were going to work on the car and exactly where the problem was, front or rear. But now it appears it's the front brakes. And that's where about 75% of your stopping power is located, in the front. So when you lose front brakes, you're big trouble. There is Dale Earnhardt, the leader of this race. He has won three times this year at North Wilkesboro, at Sears Point, and the Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis. He has a little over a second advantage on Sterling Marlin in the separation from first to fifth. Fifth place occupied by Jeff Gordon is a little over four seconds. There's Jeff. Gordon with an amazing $267,225 in winning. How much? So far. How much? 2.267. Just this year. And he is likely to exceed the record amount won in a single season set by Dale Earnhardt. He has six races to go and Jeff already over $2 million. We're seeing Rusty Wallace trying to get by the Terry Labonte, the Kellogg's car, can't quite make it. There's Mike Wall once again. Heilig Myers car. Third and fourth. Labonte third. Rusty fourth. Closing in on the 200 lap mark. 187 are completed here at Martinsville. The lead continues to be held by Dale Earnhardt, and we'll be back in a moment. This is Dale Jarrett's NASCAR. You can't get his engine, you can't get his tires, but you can get his motor oil. Texaco Haviland Formula 3. It's formulated to control volatility and fight oil vaporization. It provides complete protection, and it's the exact same Haviland you can buy right off the shelf, which, by the way, is a heck of a lot easier. Spread more life to your car, take it to the stars. Sunday, we believe in putting on our best. 
Maybe that's why no car company has won more races in the history of NASCAR than Chevrolet. Splitfire earned a United States patent. Splitfire doesn't look like any other spark plug. And the patented Splitfire doesn't work like any other spark plug. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. Quicker in the quarter mile. A 4.8% gain in mileage. There's nothing like a Splitfire. You'll get more power and more mileage. Or your money back. You'll get more here. And you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. Gee, I bet this is a different guy than you met during the recruiting process, huh? Dale Earnhardt leaves the Goodies 500 here at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. There is Sterling Marlin running in second position, followed by Terry Labonte and Rusty Wallace. You know, there you see Mike Wallace in the 90 car. Yeah. You know, he's been running pretty doggone good today. Pretty hard-nosed, wouldn't you say? I would yeah. say so, yes. Well, you know what I think he's doing? What? He's putting in his application. Auditioning? Oh, he's oh, auditioning. Oh. There's, you know, there's cars out there that need drivers. And, you know, not that he's not doing a good job in the 90 car, but I think he's saying to Bud Moore and to Chuck Ryder and whoever, hey, guys, look at me. Look at me. Trying to impress a uh, car owner for next year. Yep. position at the moment. Last, last week a great run at Dover. Just ahead of him is Ted Musgrave. Just ahead of him is about five spots. Yep, he's trying to take away that spot from Ted. And now look at this mess here. Yeah, this mess. Two, three, and four right there. Well, no, that's that's two, four, and five, but that's position two, right. three, and four. We know what you meant. Okay. <laughs> Labonte has second. And Hamilton has 12. John Kernan has more on Bobby Hamilton. Bob, I was talking to his crew chief, Robbie Loomis, this morning. He said, you know, John, we spent two days here testing about a week and a half ago. We brought two cars here. He said, this is the worst car out of the test. We're saving the other one because it's better. But he also told me that, hey, the car that they got here is hungry for a victory, but that car is not nearly as hungry for a victory as that team is. And after they finished second last week at Dover, they've got a taste for victory. And Robbie says it could very well happen today here at Martinsville. He does have some damage on the front end of that car caused early by an uh, encounter with a tire on pit road. Now, let's check the interval between Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace, who is running in third position. He won 192 to 196, and Rusty cut the interval from 2.4 seconds down to 1.8. We see where Earnhardt ran across some traffic in that second lap. He goes from 20.9 to 21.3. That's not a professional driver. Earnhardt doesn't do that, so that means the slower car was in his way that lap. Yeah, look how consistent one and three and four are, really, but uh, you know, pretty obvious that he did encounter some traffic on lap 193. 201 laps are completed. Rusty now running in third spot. This year, he of course won here at Martinsville and at Richmond. Rusty did, looking for his fourth consecutive victory on this racetrack. And the five car, Terry Labonte, is looking for his fourth victory in 1995. There's a battle for what, Ned? Uh, Tim Burton? Tim, Tim position. The eight car, uh, Jeff Burton has it. Bobby Labonte wants it. And there we see Bobby Hamilton from the SDP Pontiac. He is in front place. He's trying to get the easel. right there. Six cars that started are back in. Including Elton Sawyer, who yep. had the spin up there, set up there for a while, had a little fire in the car, but he's back up there running now. As yes. here goes Hamilton. He's got the inside groove.
As we watch this, Hutch Strickland, the Quaker State Ford, has gone on the pit road in the back pits. He has been slow around the racetrack for the past few laps, so. Musgrave watching Hamilton and Labonte battle in front of him. Hamilton takes the 11th spot from Bobby Labonte. Now Ted trying to work his way to the inside of Bobby. Watch Bobby Hamilton when he goes down in turn one. Watch the right side of his car. Right on the 43. Look how slow it gets to the ground. Right there. I mean, that car is really, really soft sprung. And when he goes to the corner, it just lays over and almost drags the racetrack with the rocker panel. Sixteen, seventeenth, and eighteenth also in the pretty good battle here. Gary Pope. Dale Jarrett. Dale had, had worked and passed it. Dale Jarrett had worked and passed every one of those cars on the outside. Went in there, the board uh, slipped up in front of him, and there he lost him back. He lost him back. He's got to go back to Now we're watching from Daryl Waltrip's car. He's 19. There's the Western Auto Chevrolet of Daryl Waltrip. Daryl and I hope today. Daryl Walter has won how many times on this racetrack? Eleven. Five in the spring race and six in this event. There we see the top five. But let me point out that the fifth place car is right now pretty sorry fifth. He's what, about eight, nine seconds behind our leader? So Gordon has fallen back from Earnhardt. Jerry, what's the problem? Well, a couple of things, Bob. Remember, Gordon only took on right side tires when he got pinned in the pits on that previous stop back in the lap 144. Also, the car was loose even then, and it's gotten even more loose now, so he just can't run the car very hard in the corner. He's exactly one half lap down to the leader, Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt has passed the 21 car of Morgan Shepard and Hound. Now he is two laps down in 28. We we'll see some of the Sydney Pinto members. What are your up battle? They have really been going at it back there in for those positions. We're looking at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, <laughs> and on back. Ted Musgrave uh, going backwards a little bit now as Mayfield got by him, Gary Cook got by him, now Dale Jarrett gets by him, and Darrell Walter trying to get by him. Kyle Petty leading that group, he's also in the left with these cars. Kyle is running in 14th position. There's Schrader back out there making yep. it up, so they must have got his brake, brake problem fixed, and here is Bill Elliott trying to go for fifth. Inside of Jeff Gordon, out of corner number four. Wiggles a little coming out of the corner. Jeff Yep. Takes that battery car. Seems to be picking up speed as these tires get worn. John Kernan has more on Bill Elliott, who continues to race with Jeff Gordon. You know, Bob, a lot of people don't think of Bill Elliott as being a short track driver, but he's had some good runs here at Martinsville. And on his crew, Tony Gibson and Mike Beam, a lot of short track experience. We're well, Tony Toby that he and Mike, with the limited amount of practice this weekend, put their heads together and borrowed from some of the teams that they've run well with that still gets around Jeff Gordon for that spot that they've run well with here at Martinsville. And kind of a hodgepodge mixture of a setup. And Tony said, hey, it's like that same case. It's we either going to be good or we're going to be bad. It looks like they're pretty good right now. Yeah, they are. Elliott has never won on this track. His best finish was third in this race last year. I tell you what, we have, <laughs> while Elliott and Jeff Gordon race side by side, Rick Master joined the battle, Bobby Hamilton has joined the battle, and Mark Martin isn't that far back. It's Mark. So Jeff Gordon is losing positions and points rapidly. Well, stands to lose them. He has lost two positions, and here comes Rick Mass. Mass looking for seven. Hamilton trying to get on the inside of Matt. Can't quite make it. 
Gordon still running in that second groove up there that seems to be working for him. Although he's losing losing some positions. And Dick Trickle almost crashes up in turn four right in front of Dale Earnhardt, but apparently everything's okay. Now Elliott and Bodine are side by side. And Bodine easily goes by Elliott and takes that spot away. Let's see if we see what happened with Dick Trickle. We see Earnhardt coming up there on the right of your screen. We'll look to the left here now. And it looks like Ricky Rudd and Dick Trickle got together just a little bit. And Dick Trickle was able to save it, being the short track champion that he is. Robert Presley in the 33 car is trying to win Rookie of the Year honors. And right ahead of him is Ricky Craven, and that's how they are in the point standings also, as Craven has a narrow lead on Robert Presley in the battle for the Winston Cup Rookie of the Year honors. Right now, Robert Presley is in the 22nd place car, the last car on the lead lap. As Earnhardt tries to get by, can't quite make it. And we can see Presley losing the back end as he came off the corner. These cars starting to slip and slide. There goes Craven by Ted Musgrave, the family channel car, taking over that spot. That's the 21st, 20 spot. Puts Musgrave back in 21st. Now Jeff Gordon has his hands full with Bobby Hamilton for seven. And Hamilton drives deep right down into the turn. Well, how he wishes he could have made this pass last time to Oh, that's for sure. got that spot and now Rick Mast will be the next to try to move around Jeff Gordon. Continues to be a Dale Earnhardt race followed by Labonte, Wallace, Marlin, and Bodine. you get improved performance for a while. But only Bosch Platinum has a pure Platinum Center electrode that's heat-fused for an airtight seal. So Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power over a longer performance life. Which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums. Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. When it comes to rope and a steer, Folks in Grand Junction, Colorado will tell you that Ron Marking can ride with the best of them. And when it comes to overhauling an engine or rebuilding a carburetor, well, he can do it all. You see, when Ron's not riding a horse for fun, he's turning a wrench for a living. So he buys a lot of parts, mostly from AutoZone. Sure, there are other parts stores in town, but Ron knows that when you want the right part for the right price, there's just no place better than AutoZone. Excellence Award. Just ask Dale Earnhardt. Who the heck are those guys? UAWGF. Assembly line to finish line. Teamwork wins. All kinds of things going on here at Martinsville. Robert Presley got into trouble in turn number four, and Ted Musgrave lost it in the backstretch. Yeah, this was not the caution flag. Musgrave was the caution flag, and evidently they ever see Musgrave jumped out of his car. Boy, when you see the replay of this thing, you'll see how close Musgrave came to flipping over when he hit the inside wall. He hit it a ton, but as you can see, he has climbed out of the car already and is okay. And we see Robert Presley coming into the pits. He was not able to stop his car, and Musgrave is running. Wow. <laughs> and 
And of course, all the leaders are in the pits. You can see them here on the front stretch. And here comes Gary Labonte. Labonte. He beat him out. Oh, he sure did. Big time. Earnhardt second, then uh, Martin, Wallace, Marlin, Bobby Labonte, Cope, Rick Mast. Mast. Jeff Gordon still is on pit road, working on the left side of that car. Now the jacks are down, and he goes out. I'm sure they were working on the sway bar of that car yep. or something to try to get it to handling a little bit better. Bill Elliott was another one that lost a lot of time on that uh, pit stop. And we see there's the Robert Presley car. We see he made contact with Musgrave, and Musgrave is yelling in there. He's not very happy. Here's Bill Weber. Ted Musgrave on the way back to his trailer. Ted, obviously, a uh, tense moment out there. What happened? Well, we dropped the cylinder, so we were running on seven cylinders for a while, and figured I'd just stay in a high groove, stay out of everybody's way, and I just got taken out by the 33 car, and I went and asked him. I said, what was wrong? He said, well, I ran out of brakes. Well, if you're out of brakes, you shouldn't be on the racetrack, you know, so uh, rookies. Ted Musgrave high in the points, but out of the race. Yeah, he's in fifth place in the points coming into this race. And here is a look again at what happened. Watch as he backs in his fence. Clear up on the wall, then back on it, and... Yeah. And just about that time after he finished uh, his reckon, uh, Presley was in trouble up in turn four. Here we see the leaders, Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, and Rusty Wallace, and... Apparently, when, when he hit Musgrave, maybe he either pushed a fender in or messed up the steering or something, and then when he went into that next turn, just lost it. I'm talking about Preston. Doesn't it? Wow. Mm -hmm. Man. Mm, the hood up on the Family Channel 4 for Ted Musgrave, and uh, Jack Roush will try to assist getting that car back into the race. Doesn't look like Jack's very happy either over this whole situation. No, it was an unfortunate situation. Now, watch this when he's, he sees press in the pits. He runs down there. <laughs> I saw Ted start to uh, run toward that direction, and uh, now I realize what he was running to. <laughs> so the caution is out for the fifth time this afternoon here at Martinsville. Budweiser King, top fuel dragster. Who says you need wings to fly? Your car's engine was made for the open road. But that's not where it is, day in and day out. Stop and go driving can kill an engine by creating deposits and wear that rob performance and shorten engine life. That's why you need the added protection of TM8, a new engine treatment from Valvoline. TM8 coats moving parts with eight friction fighting ingredients, including Teflon. So no matter where you are, your engine will run just like it's on the open road. TM8 from Valvoline. Because driving is more stop than go.
finest driver in the world's fastest cars compete tonight at 8 Eastern in the Grand Prix of Portugal. Formula One, the art of motor racing, only on ESPN. Back at North, uh, Martinsville rather, under caution because of an accident involving Ted Musgrave and Robert Presley. Now let's take a look at some pit stop activity that uh, occurred a few minutes ago. Okay, here's Jeff Bodine on the back stretch. Hey, trying something a little bit different. He's changing the left side tires first. Normally they do the right sides first, but they're with this new pit rule today. Trying to, that might be something to look at because he had a good pit stop. Let's go to John Carter. Well, let's talk to his crew chief, Paul Andrews. And Paul, a little something different on your pit stop changing lefts first. Why are you doing that? Well, you know, it's time to change the pit stop or stops all around because of the two gun rule. We thought we'd try something a little different on the short tracks. You always get jammed up in these places. Sometimes we feel, we feel like we lose a little time on when we do right sides first. So we're going to do the, we're going to try the left sides first for these two short tracks, see how they work, and kind of go from there. How's it working so far? Well, we lost one position going in, or, you know, leaving a bit, so we didn't get much practice. We feel like we can also be a little bit better. We, didn't, we only made like seven stops total. And uh, the guys done a pretty good job. We're pretty happy with them right now. Well, I think we can get better. Maybe we, you know, the pits aren't really congested here, so not really hurt, killing us too bad here. All right, well, that's Paul Andrews. And the reason they didn't get a chance to practice their pit stops last week as much as most of these teams, they did a two-day test at North Wilkesboro. They expect to be strong there next weekend. And Jeff Bodine at the moment is running in sixth position. Labonte's crew did such a great job of getting him out. We wondered if they changed all four tires, and let's check it out. Well, they yeah, did. They did. They sure did. did. We see Terry Labonte coming down pit road and leaving all the rest of them there. Here comes Earnhardt now. Man. And there you can see the uh, off-track time by Earnhardt and uh, Terry Labonte. That was a great pit stop by Gary Dehart and that crew. Very Jerry. good. Jerry? Guys, Terry Labonte's pit stop was 17.8 seconds. Incredible. But let me show you what they've been looking at here in the Labonte pits. Now go ahead and roll the videotape. They taped their own pits on the watch. Rusty Wallace's car come in here as sort of the brush back. Now we'll, we'll back it up one moment here. Let's we'll back it back up to the car. It hasn't come in yet. Go ahead and back it back up. Okay, now let's try it again. Now we'll watch, watch the five car come in and watch the two car nearly pinch him off. See, see the two car come by, they had to stop. They couldn't get out to work on the right side of the car. And even with that brush back on pit road, they changed four tires in 17.8 seconds with just two air guns. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. It really is. Okay, here they are coming in, and Terry Labonte peels off to go in his pits, and Rusty is pitting right in front of him, and you'll see that the crew members do have to stop for just a fraction of a second and get on lap to their work because they didn't want to get run over by Rusty. Of course, he was trying to get to his pits. Not, not to, like the old uh, baseball pitcher who brushed back the batter a little bit or something like that. I don't think so. <laughs> I think he's just trying to get in his pits. Here's Bill Weber with Robert Presley having a brief conversation with his crew but robert obviously a tough incident out there in your view of what happened well you know dale was coming up on us and uh soon we'd better get ready you know no qualified and we had to start way back there in the back and called up the tad there and just never could get by him couldn't get by him and finally got me a run off the corner at him there and all of a sudden he jumped loose and got in the back of him and you know there just wasn't nothing to do I don't know what it done, went down the corner there and didn't have no brakes, and they say we got plenty of brake pad left, so maybe we chipped the line off there after we got into him. You were hoping for a little rain here, weren't you? Well, I, th I thought maybe luck had changed a little bit, hoping it's going to rain there, but, you know, they said it's quit now. Well, as uh, Ted mentioned, Robert is a rookie, and he's running for the Rookie of the Year title here in the Winston Cup Series. Seven points behind Ricky Craven. Let's watch... The crew member on the 24 car, he's back by the right rear making a chassis adjustment. And the four car leaves and he just jumped over. The four car said, go ahead, Sterling. <laughs> and those boys are good athletes. They are. You have to be anymore. We got one more lap to go before green. And we're getting near the halfway point of this race. Just completing 244. They'll take the green flag on the 245th left. 
By the way, Terry Labonte is leading this race, and this is the first time that he has led here at Martinsville since April of 1988. Wow, that's oh, hard to believe. It is. As much success as he's had on some on of the short, short tracks. tracks. Yeah. Here's the field summary for you. There's Kyle Fady in 10th oh, spot. That, yeah. Jeff Fady Gordon back spot. in 11th spot, so he's lost quite a few positions. Yeah. Remember, he has an average at 10th place finish or better to automatically win the championship. Rick Mast lost a lot on that. He came out in 17th. He was 7th before the pit stop. They were 14th to 7th on the pit stop. They lost the 18th and made a good stop. Green is out. We understand that Mast had to make two stops. That's the reason he fell back so much. Okay. Labonte leading Earnhardt, then Wallace, Marlin, and Coke. And they're trying to win John Andretti a lap down. And looked like he bounced off the curve that time. Might have gotten in the side of Labonte. <laughs> And Gray still trying to get that lap back. He's in 20th position. Remember, they penalized him uh, earlier in the race That's for improving his position. That's the Kmart Little Caesars car on the inside, the 37 car. Now Labonte does put him a lap down. Earnhardt alongside of John now. Red and Red, he comes back coming off the turn. A little contact there between John and Dale. And we see Gary Cope on the inside of Sterling Marlin. Boy, Cope is having a great afternoon. Very good run. Very good run. Sterling Marlin got his car sideways, coming off the second corner, allowed Cope to get on the inside, and he's still trying to take that position away. But Sterling says, uh-uh, I don't want to get it up that easily. From Morgan Shepherd's group cam, Morgan. Now, Derek Coke is another one that made great strides during that pit stop. He was running about 17th or 18th and came out in fifth place, but we understand he only took on two tires. And that seems to be working on his car, at least in the early laps after the green flag race. Cross flags will be displayed by Doyle Ford, this time down. Half the race completed, half to go. 250 laps going to be in the books here in just a second. Well, Karen Levine is uh, eligible for that $10,000 Gatorade uh, halfway challenge. He's, uh, he's got it. Yep. He's even the man within the lead. Labonte has won three times this year. Looks like Rusty Wallace, Ned, is just not quite as good for about 15 or 20 laps as these other two cars. I think it takes a while for the tires and the chassis to really come in on the middle Ford. Once they do, then he, he really gets going. But you're right. I think on the new tires, and he's not quite as good. We talked about some other cars a little bit earlier in that same situation. We won't be coming back. Oh, look at Earnhardt. Here's the Budweiser race recap. Terry Labonte leading at the halfway point. He led 16 the first 250. Nine lead changes. Five caution flights. Total of 55 laps. Dale Earnhardt, Wallace, Labonte, Grissom, and Jared have all picked up five bonus points for leading this race. Notice that Jeff Gordon has not led a lap so far. Ricky Craven has also led two laps. And uh, those that are out of the race, officially only one car, Hunt Strickland, at the moment. So Terry Labonte sets the pace here just past the halfway point at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. We'll take another break and be back with more of our live coverage. Gold. And as you know, this is the 25th anniversary of NASCAR Winston Cup racing. That's why I'm here at the Joe Weatherly Museum in Darlington among all of these NASCAR... Tim, is there any way we can get the air fixed before the show? Yeah, I'll get it fixed. Tim, call Tri-County Air Conditioning. You know they'll have it fixed in no time. Tri-County, Tri-County. What's their number? 485 and a bunch of twos. All right, 485 and how many twos? <whistles> Finally, it's cool time. 
Lakewood Ranch is the hometown of tomorrow. A community with all the best that life has to offer. Rivers and lakes glisten among thick stands of oak, pine, and hickory. Families picnic at friendly neighborhood parks. Just a stone's throw from some of the prettiest homes you have ever seen. Come discover the nature of Florida living at Lakewood Ranch. The traditions of yesterday in the hometown of tomorrow, Lakewood Ranch. Sight on the net. On NASCAR on ESPN today at Clay Earl's beautiful Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. Half mile facility where they have been running since the late 40s. This is the 47th running of this event. And Terry Labonte is in command at the moment, but there are the first three, and you can see slight separation among the three of them. And Rusty looks like he's starting to make his move towards the front. There's Sterling Marlin, the lap car of John Andrew ahead of Sterling. He is in fourth place. Sterling has pulled away from Derek Coke. Derek was trying to pass him not too long ago, but now Sterling's pulling away. Rusty beginning to mount a challenge on Dale for second. Wallace taking two in different lines in return one. Bernard is going out very, very wide and Rusty going in very shallow in the corner. As of now, here are the points. If Rusty finishes where he is right now, everybody else, he would pick up a position and Bill Elliott would knock out Morgan Shepard and Elliott would move into the 10th position and be on the stage in New York. Graves would lose two positions. Labonte would gain one. That's if points were awarded right now. Just gives you an idea of how every single position may play a factor in where you finish in the final points. Whether you're on the on the stage, whether you're off the stage, and whether you win the championship bonus money. There's Marlon. Here is Derry and Jeff Bodine battling for the position along with Dale Jarrett. Jeff Bodine started in 17th. Right now is running in 6th position. The car just ahead of him driven by Derry Cope. His best Martinsville finish in 14 races tonight back in 1986. And John Kernan has more. Bob, I'm going to pick up where I left off several cautions ago when I tried to talk about Derek Cope. He told me this morning that this was a really good car for him. In fact, they ran it here earlier this year. It ran well until he got into an accident. Now, their pit strategy, this time they took on only two tires. The next pit stop, they'll take on four. And then when there's a spin, as Lake Speed gets turned around and turned four, they'll take on four tires for Derek Cope the next stop. And then their final pit stop would be just a two-tire change. And now we'll have to wait and see if the teams decide to make pit stops here. It's a caution flag once again here at Martinsville for the sixth time this afternoon. A spin down in turn four involving Lake Speed. The amazing split fire spark plug won a United States patent. Does it really work? Is it that much better? It's guaranteed. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. You'll feel it work. Guarantee. A 4.8% gain in mileage. You'll save because it works. Guarantee. There's nothing like a split fire. You'll get more power and more mileage for your money back. You'll get more here. And you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. Dad, wake up, what? Dad. Get up, Dad. What is it, Jack? It's 
Saturday. You said you would take me to McDonald's for breakfast Saturday. Yeah, uh, and you I said know. I could have an egg McMuffin and a big juice. And you said you and Mom would have pancakes and sausage and coffee. And you said you wouldn't go to work today. You said... I know, but it's 3.30 in the morning. Oh. We got plenty of time, okay? Okay. I'll be back in exactly 10 minutes. <laughs> In a sport where nerves are made of steel, it's only natural. The tools are made by craftsmen. 1,600 craftsmen hand tools made in America, guaranteed forever. The only official tools of IndyCar, NASCAR, NHRA, and the new Super Truck Series by Craftsman, only at Sears. Well, the points battle heats up in Formula One as the tour moves to Portugal. Benetton's Michael Schumacher still leads Damon Hill of the Williams team. Our coverage from Estoril, Portugal is at 8 o'clock tonight on ESPN. Here at Martinsville, we are under caution still. Mark Martin made a pit stop, but very few others here on the front stretch. Uh, it's Rick been, Mass uh, did. Yeah. yeah. Hasn't been too many laps since they had some. Uh, Jerry, what happened to Mark Martin down there? They feel like they have nothing to lose, Bob. Uh, there's only about 16 or 17 cars on the lead lap. In fact, make it uh, 19 on the lead lap, and they were running about 17 spots. So, Steve Nielsen, our car is so loose, we go, might as well go ahead and stop and make an adjustment. They came in and changed tires and made an air pressure adjustment to try to tighten the car up a little bit. How about over where you are, John Kernan? Jerry, Rick Mass was in twice, the first time for right side tires and then to make a chassis adjustment. He just left that road moments ago, came back in for left side tires. The car was pushing really, really bad, so they tried to loosen it up for Rick. A couple of cars they were pitting on the back stretch, Jeff Burton and Ricky Craven made pit stops as well. You ever run at Eldora, Benny? Yeah, sure did. Eldora, half mile dirt track up in Ohio? Yep. Yeah, ran there in 1968. Here's an auto light field summary. They had a salute to Earl Baltus last night, the owner of, uh, of uh, Eldora, and uh, I sent him an audio message. We'd like to salute Earl for his uh, contribution to auto racing up there. They held the four crown nationals. Tony Stewart won the sprint and midget races, Jack Hewitt the silver crown, and Jack Boggs the stock car division. You didn't ask me how I did. Uh, I bet you won the race, didn't you, Ben? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, we still have only one car that's out of the race. As you can see, that's Strickland. And we're about ready to go racing again. Yes, we are. The uh, alignment now two abreast forms behind the pace car. Kenny Schrader sitting on pit road has been for a number of laps during this caution with the head up on the bug line. Wow. <laughs> that's the way we use those tires. There you go. The wheels are turning a little quicker on the cars as they come down to take the green. And once again, John Andretti tries to get back on the lead lap. Labonte is to the outside, the leader of the race. Here comes Earnhardt trying to follow Andretti. He has position. And Labonte has no choice but pass the Andretti car. And they to get outside. While we watch this, Bob, Jeremy Mayfield had run awfully good and been running up there. He got back in the lead lap. Well, he's gone like uh, all about three laps down now. He's seen some 26th place. During the last call, and his car stalled down between his turns one and two, had to have a record to come out and yeah. push him in. But he just sat there for a while. Don't know what the problem is. He's back out there running. There he is. He's running good right now. He's right down on the inside there, letting the cars that are in the lead lap go by on the outside. Is Elliot? Bobby Hamilton, Jeff Gordon, all these cars racing for position. Jerry Fudge, what's going on with Jeff Gordon now? Many very uncharacteristically, they can't get a handle on that car number 24 on the previous pit stop. Ray Hamilton with the spring rubber out of the left front. He took some wedge out of the right rear, but the car still will not come toward him. As if the spotter tells him the car is bouncing up and down in the corners, and Ray Everton thinks they may have lost a shock absorber. Jeff Gordon has not led a lap so far today. There has only been one other race this year that he has not led, and that was at Sears Point on the road course. He's back in 10th at the moment. There's Kyle Petty. Then 
Michael Waltrip in 12th. And this is the roof cam of Morgan Shepard, who is two laps down in 24th, but running with this group of 10th, 11th, 12th. There goes 13th place, Bobby Labonte. And DW is right behind him in 14th place. So Darrell hanging in there in the Western Auto Chevrolet on the lead lap. There's Mark Martin back there. You see, he made a pit stop during that day. Work his way back up there. there. Mark's back in 16th position. Looks like Jimmy Spencer in the Smoke and Joe car has been running pretty good. He got several, a couple laps down early on, but yeah, he got three laps down one time. He got one of those laps back, so he's only two laps down now. Spencer being shown in the 24th position. There's our fifth, sixth, seventh place car. Fifth place car is Derek Colt. There's Jeff Bodine in sixth. Dale Jarrett and Bill Elliott will be the next car in fourth position. Bobby Hamilton. Dale Jarrett has finished fifth in the last two Goodies 500s. His best finish here at Martinsville was in 93 spring race and finished third. If you just joined us and wondered what happened at the truck race yesterday, uh, the truck race was rained out. We'll be run here tomorrow. And ESPN2 will have live coverage at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Benny and Dave Despain and Marty Reed will be staying tonight and join you tomorrow morning. And Jeff Bodine on the inside of Coke. Ooh, and they make a little contact. <laughs> Dale Jarrett wished he was up there close enough that he could have followed Bodine through, but he was not, so he's going to have to do it on his own without having the door open for him. Gary Cope in the last 25 short track races, only two top tens. His best finish on a short track, sixth at Richmond in 95. Here comes Martin and Rick Mass moving to the inside of Ricky Rudd. Rudd's car is one that hasn't been working that well here, and Ricky normally runs good on this racetrack and on this type of racetrack, but, well, I shouldn't say that. This is the only type of racetrack there is. Like <laughs> one of short tracks. <laughs> yeah, but he normally does run good on short tracks or flat type tracks. As a matter of fact, uh, Ricky Rudd's crew chief, Billy Engel, announced uh, a couple weeks ago that he'd be leaving the 10 car at the end of the year. Bill Engel is looking for a job that has driving connection with it. He still wants to be a race car driver. Remember a few years ago when he tried that name? Yeah. Ran a few sportsman races or played yeah. stock races. Got caught up in a wreck at Daytona in the Goodies 300, I think, and broke an arm or something. But uh, he still wants, wants to drive a race car. Look for more on that. Let's go to the pits and John Carney. And I was talking with Billy this weekend. He says he's had a couple of teams that have offered him a job as crew chief, but also a chance to drive in some selected Bush Grand National races and some selected super truck races. Billy says he'd rather go as a full-time driver, but hey, this might be a way to get his foot in the door and see how he can do and impress somebody enough that maybe in 1997 he could become a full-time driver. Okay. And Jerry has a report on Barry Dotson. We reported earlier that Barry, of course, had left the Felix Nevada's Kyle Petty operation, and Barry's been here all weekend. He told me before the race that he had three offers yesterday for uh, a possible truck team, an NASCAR super truck team. In fact, he said, I may just take one of those offers and go to work for one of the NASCAR super truck teams in the next uh, couple of weeks or two. Now, look, what's happening with Kyle Petty? Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, they're having a great run here this afternoon, and this team is really happy about how they're doing right now. Their best finish in the last seven races was 24th at Burlington on ATNF. Today, they've been around the top ten all day. On Friday, during the short practice, even Kyle was running back and forth to the truck, helping the team get parts, get the car in good shape for this race. If you think it's all about money, well, it's not. These guys are racers, and this 42 team racing for pride the rest of the way in 95. And Kyle has just moved in to 10th position, putting Jeff back to 11th. Terry Labonte, who is running all by himself out there. By the way, Ted Musgrave is back in the race. Terry Labonte leads the Goodies 500 here at Martinsville, Virginia.
Wrangler jeans have always been worn by cowboys. But nowadays, even horses wear them. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Wrangler. The perfect jean for your 10-year-old son. And your 10-year-old husband. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. There's no track in the world that's tougher on brakes than the one in Martinsville, Virginia. And when drivers take the green flag here, they all have one thing in common. The same brand of brakes. Because without them, you can't come down this straightaway at 120 miles an hour and still make it through the turn. So which brand do the top drivers use to get them through 500 laps at Martinsville? Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. And we stock them at AutoZone. If you don't replace your air and oil filters regularly, you might as well drive your car off a cliff. Because dirt can really mess up an engine. Fram Extra Life Air Filters and Fram Extra Guard Oil Filters keep out dirt best to protect your engine. Fram, America's number one premium brand. Pay a little now for a lot later. Buy any two Fram filters and get your favorite officially licensed NFL team cap for $1.99. Back at Martinsville, where Ricky Rudd has brought the number 10 Tide car in for a stop. What is the rear end, Benny? If there's some smoke in the back of the car. It looks like he may have burned a gear up in that car, yes. That's a tough place on gears. Well, Benny can exp explain in a track fact a little more about the rear end of these cars and the ring and the pinion and all that kind of stuff. Here's a track fact. Trackbacks are brought to you by Quaker State. The intelligent oil for longer engine life. We keep hearing the engine builders talking about dyno on the engine, trying to find that little bit of horsepower. Well, Tex Powell of a Tex Racing in Star, North Carolina, builds gears, and he determined that gears needed to be dynoed as well. So, along with the folks at Dana, they have put together a gear dyno. Well, maybe we should explain a little bit about a gear. We'll show you that, and we'll come back and show you how this baby works. Okay, you've heard of ring gear and pinion. There we are, ring gear on the left, pinion on the right. This baby hooks to the drive shaft, which goes up to the engine. If the engine turns uh, 9,000 RPMs, so does the pinion. Little pulley on the yoke, that pulls the pump that cools the rear end. And there we see the ring gear. It's bolted to the locker. This turns the rear wheels. Sometimes the engine will turn 9,000 RPMs, and the rear wheels only turning 125 miles per hour. Or the engine could turn 9,000 RPMs, and the rear wheels would turn 200 miles an hour, controlled by the ring gear. There we see the pinion installed in the carrier. We'll install the ring gear in, bolt the baby up, and pretty soon we're able to find out just how good this thing is going to perform. Okay, we've got the completed gear in the dyno. This 150 horsepower electric motor turns the chain, turns the pinion. Now the gear just isn't freewheeling inside, it's resisted by a water break over there. Look, we're going to show you how this baby works. First of all, we run just light pressure against the gear. And then we crank the water against that gear, putting all that pressure against it, making that gear feel like it's coming off the corner at Marsville, 750 horsepower, trying to rip those teeth off the ring gear and pinion. There's the maximum pressure we'll use. And there's the 620 gear. It's completely broken in. It's ready to go, ready to drop their hammer off the first lap, and hopefully it'll run 500 laps. And right. Ricky Rudds didn't. Didn't appear. <laughs> sure did. That's pretty impressive. Terry Labonte continues to set the pace with almost a two-second lead on Rusty Wallace. As you can see, he has passed Dale Earnhardt for a second and pulled away of a little bit. Marlin back five seconds, and Jeff Bodine is running in fifth. Here is how Rusty got second from Dale. Comes off the corner, and Rusty goes down to the inside, and Dale just basically did not battle him because... Dale Earnhardt is struggling with his race car right now, Ned, appears to be. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be handling as good as it was earlier in the race. Now, he said at the top of the show that he felt that the car would be good for, or I think that's the race day, that he said the car would be good in the last half of the race. Well, it looked to me like it was better in the first half than it is right now, but I'm sure they'll make adjustments. And here's DW on the move. Yeah, battle for 11th place as Waltrip, he goes inside of Jeff Gordon and gets 11th. And here comes Bobby Labonte, the interstate batteries car. The young man who just signed a 
Uh, extension with his contract with Joe Gibbs to the year 2000. Cope and Hamilton are racing for seventh spot. And once again, Bobby Hamilton having a good race, but so is Derry Cope. Derek only took on those two tires during that last pit stop. Might be hurting him a little bit now, but it gave him great track position. He's still up there in the top ten, but right now, <clears throat> about to lose seventh position. This is Bobby Hamilton's eighth race here at Martinsville. His best finish was eighth in the spring of this year. Bobby Hamilton passed Bill Elliott in the McDonald's car just a couple laps ago. He's pulled away by 10 or 15 car lengths from him. Rusty Wallace has totally driven away from Dale Earnhardt and might be gaining a little bit on Terry Labonte. Earnhardt is struggling with the Goodrich Chevrolet right now. I don't know exactly what his problem is, but... Hamilton hasn't that led any laps today. He started in 12th position. His highest place has been a 6th, his lowest 19th. Currently in 8th. You see that mane and tail on the back of that 12 car, the, uh -huh. you know, the shampoo? Yeah. I told you earlier in the year they were supposed to grow hair. Uh, I've been using it for eight months and ain't grown up hair yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it is good shampoo. It, yep. it does work good. Yeah. You're supposed to rub it on your scalp, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Was he drinking it? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> or eating it. <laughs> Put it on salad or something. Salad list. Terry Labonte comes up on some heavy traffic here. Todd Bodine right ahead of him. Here's a Fram Field summary. Terry goes to the outside of Todd, who is running back in 29 spot, 19 left now. Looks like the Rusty Wallace might be getting just a little bit on Terry Labonte. Terry looks like Earnhardt is struggling, is he? No doubt, Bob. Apparently the car, for whatever reason, has developed a significant uh, problem with just getting real loose and going into corners. They've only run about 75 or 80 laps at their last pit stop. And you know, they, they could make it after about lap 360, so about 40 more laps, they could make one stop, and that would be their final stop they would need to make. But right now, he has a handful of race car extremely loose. Let's check in with uh, John Kernan, who has Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd still sitting in his car as his crew replacing the rear end gear. Uh, Ricky, a problem with the car puts you behind the wall here. Uh, I'm not really sure what you said, but uh, we burn up a gear. You know, I can smell it happening for about 30, 40 laps. And a lot of times you smell grease, but it's usually another car. And uh, that's probably about one of the first or second times only I've ever burned a gear up here at Martinsville. And not really sure why. I don't know if the food got clogged up or the pump quit working or, or what it was. So we're going to put another gear in it. And, Right about to the points for this time down the board. Well, Ricky Rudd will be behind the wall for a little while as they've got the new gear out, taking the old one out, getting ready to put the new one in. But it'll take a number of laps to get him back out on the track. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt continues to run in third position as this race for what, uh, seven? Still pretty good. Yep, still that same battle we saw a little while ago. It had settled down for a little bit, but now. Bobby Hamilton getting race again down on the inside of Derek Coke trying to take over that seventh position. Up in front of them just a lap ago, Dale Jarrett has Jeff Lodine in fifth position. Jarrett driving with a broken rib today. That was a tough hit he took at those. And Bobby Hamilton still having trouble getting around Derek Coke. Also, Derry Cope. Did we say that Derry Cope has uh, re-signed with Bobby yeah. Allison for next year? Yeah, we covered that in the first few minutes of the show. Here is uh, Bobby Labonte and Jeff Gordon racing for 12 spots. And really, they aren't too far from being left, Bob. They're about uh, three seconds in front of Terry Labonte. As they race side by side. That's going to slow them down even more. They're touching a little bit. And now Labonte gets the position. And the leader, Labonte, has had trouble coming off turn four, and Rusty Wallace takes the lead. How about that? That brought the crowd to its feet. Things that kind of settled down into a lull, but all of a sudden... Made me yell, too. I'm huh? <laughs> try not to do that today. Don't do that. You scare me to death. All right, let's see what happens. 
Well, he's coming up on the outside of Jimmy Spencer. Going into turn three. And, whoa, I don't know. what. Uh, uh, and caution is out. Caution Could is out. all on the track, maybe. The 41 car of Ricky Craven, we understand, is smoking. So maybe put down a little. There he is. Craven, the Kodiak I Chevrolet. I think he just made a pit stop and is now on the acceleration lane coming back onto the track. But the car is still smoking. And the caution is out. Jerry, what's going on? Apparently, they were saying the 30 car may have been leaking something. They said one of the cars was putting some oil down this before, and Labonte had complained there may be some oil on the racetrack. Then the next time by, he goes into turn three and four and slips up across the racetrack, and that's the reason for the caution flight, we're told. Well, in any case, Terry Labonte has relinquished the lead to Rusty Wallace. And they'll be coming into the pits. Terry Labonte got the lead with a great pit stop there a moment ago, yep. so let's see what he can do this time. Well, we'll set up a triple split for you with Wallace, Labonte, and Earnhardt, as a lot of others are also coming in. Those on the lead lap. Here's Jerry. As you, as you watch the two, five, and three cars stack three across the, your TV screen, and already done the right side, down the left side on this car. Like a little wedge in the Earnhardt car. I told you the was getting very loose. Left side on the Earnhardt car. Left side tires are on. They drop the vehicle. The car, car, they drop the vehicle. As you see those cars making their way down toward turn one. 19.4 for Terry Labonte. Here's Bill Weber on the back stretch. Four tires for Kyle Petty. They've already got the right side tires on. Now the two air guns are rounded the left side, jerking off the lug nuts. Two more for your tires to watch. Kyle's on the out of street. They're along the third factory. He's got four tires. Ward Burton is away. Burton leading the charge off pit road. Darrell has to pit down there. He wins the race in the 42, and finally Jeff Burke also away. This is the crew cam on Butch Mitchell on the 21 crew. He catches the fuel. Excess fuel. Yep. He's looking around. Well, once again, Terry Labonte's crew turns in an excellent performance, less than 20 seconds with just two air inches. They get him out first ahead of Rusty Wallace. Rusty had taken the lead from Terry on the racetrack, but now it's Labonte back in front when we go green once again in just a moment. Now, an oil made just for your hard-working engine. 4x4 from Quaker State. Off-roading, extreme temperatures, towing and hauling. They all make your light truck or 4x4 work extra hard and could shorten its life. Why settle for a conventional car oil? Get 4x4 from Quaker State. The intelligent oil for hard-working engines. Now, take home a legend. Get an authentic autograph, superstar lithograph, a $30 value, just $7.50. See details on cases of 4x4 at your local supplier. Well, this is it. Ooh, what a dump. Don't worry. We know a good handyman. What a dump. Can you help? Sure. Some primer, a couple of wing nuts. How's that? That'll work. Hey, can you mitre cut those floorboards? Will do. Good news. The external beer tap is functional. Yes! When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. I could have done this. Yeah. How cold will it be? How late will it be? How far from home will you be when your battery decides to die? It's hard to say. So if your battery's more than three years old, don't chance it. Maybe this is the time to replace it with the one that's America's most trusted. The Die Hard battery. Before yours dies, get the Die Hard at Sears Auto Center. When I punch the clock, I'm a working machine. I got boots to do the job, got my Wolverine. I can take a wild jack and a river in my Wolverine boots. Wolverine door shots, guaranteed comfort for your money back. Work like hell, feel like heaven. Wolverine door shots, made in the USA. ESPN Speed World today at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia for the Goodies 500 being brought to you by Cold Filler Miller, Miller Genuine Draft, making the world a very cool place. By the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. 
and by Allied Signals Autolite Spark Plugs, guaranteed for two years, no matter how far you go. All right, let's take a look once again at the pit stop of Terry Labonte. The crew's been doing a great job all day, and they turned in another excellent performance right now. Ned? They really did. They had just been passed on the racetrack when he hit some oil or something and slid high on the track. Rusty Wallace had taken the lead, and there you see them working on the Kellogg Cornplex Chevrolet. Go around to the left side. Someone cleaning the windshield. Of course, they're putting gas in it while they're changing all four tires. And he's down in the way, and according to Jerry Punch's uh, clock, it was about, uh, what, 18 and yeah, 9 tenths seconds or something? A little over uh, 18 seconds. We had him a little over 19, but in any case, he got out first and will be the leader when we go back to green, and we're doing so right now. Car, the green comes out, back to racing on lap 331. And Brett Budine down on the inside in the Lowe's Ford, trying to get back in the lead lap. Now there are just 16 cars on the lead lap now. Michael Walter was one of those, and he lost a lap in the pits. He had some sort of problem with the pinball contract. Robert Presley, we know, had problems earlier. The other rookie contender, Ricky Craven, 27th position. Let's go to Bill Weber. Ricky, I know you're crushed. What happened? Well, uh, probably a valve or a rock arm. Three of the last four races, we dropped a, a valve or a rock arm. I've had all the good engines all year, but uh, just going through that ride spell, I guess. Trying to win that rookie title. Well, it's pretty important to us, and I know it's important to Robert and, and his team, and We've had a season that I think parallels us. We'll just fight it up in the last five races. Well, Ricky's nine points ahead of Robert Presley. His car doesn't look so good either, but he is out on the racetrack right now. Yeah, Craven will stay in 27th for a few more laps, and then we'll continue to go downward. Presley, as you indicated, is on the racetrack, but the front end of that car isn't in real good shape after the incident he had earlier in the event. Yeah, they had to make a lot of repairs on it, but they did get it so they could get out there and ride around and try to pick up as many points as they can. And of course, one focus that he would have, too, is on that rookie battle between he and Ricky Craven. They're the top three as they come down the backstretch, Labonte, Earnhardt, and Wallace. That's the way they came out of the pits. <laughs> Sterling Marlin is running in fourth position. Then Dale Jarrett, Bobby Hamilton, Derek Cope, Bill Elliott, Jeff Bodine, and Kyle Petty. And here is the battle for seventh spot as Elliott now goes inside of Derek Cope and takes away the position, looks like. And there's a 98 car of Jeremy Mayfield. Of course, he is several laps down, three laps down, as a matter of fact, when his car stalled during a caution a while back. Bill Elliott has yet to score a top 10 on short tracks this year. His best finish on a short track was at the uh, race here in the spring where he finished 12th. Earnhardt is staying right there with Terry Labonte now. He was uh, dropping back before, but I'm sure they made an adjustment on that good range Chevrolet. And it looked like his car is getting a better traction than he coming off the turns than he was there for a while. Well, you know, he's been running pretty well on new tires. Let's wait about 20, 25 laps, and I think then we'll find out if he's fixed his problem. Good point. He looks to the outside of Labonte in turn three and four, cannot make a move, and settles back into second spot. But, yep, right now, Bernhardt's car is working better. But we'll wait and see. In a few laps, here's the Fran Field summary. Average speed of the race, by the way, 71.541 miles an hour. We've had seven leaders and 12 lead changes. Terry Labonte has just led his 100th lap. As you can see, there are 16 cars on the lead lap. And uh, Ricky Rudd is now back in the race after changing the gear on the tie forward. But as I say that, he comes back in the pit. Jerry Punch has a report on the 30 car of Michael Walter. We heard earlier he might be leaking. Jerry, is that the case? 
Well, Bobby was leaking some rear end fluid. They thought that's one of the reasons they thought that maybe Terry Labonte and some other cars slipped, slipped up on the racetrack. There may have been some rear end grease out there. That's why it's in the caution so quickly because the rear end grease makes the track so slick. Now, he came in and pitted. In fact, he moved up to come on pit road, and NASCAR was going to hold him a lap, but he lost the lap anyway in the pits because the rear end pump had seized up on the car. So he lost the lap. They tried to fix that. He is back on the racetrack now being shown at least one lap down. Yeah, he's in 21st position, a lap down to the leaders. And Ricky Rudd has rejoined the race. Yes. And the pump, we you have to circulate the fluid in the gear. If it goes to a small radiator and a fan blows air through it. If you don't do that, they will burn up definitely. Now you see Rudd is our the body has been able to pull away a little bit from there, Earnhardt. Closer to, I mean, farther than he was there a little bit ago, because Earnhardt was all over him the last time we looked at that bat. He's still within striking distance, though. Terry Labonte's... Oh, and Earnhardt got the car extremely loose when he got off... I'm sorry, Bob. <laughs> when he hit the accelerator coming off the second corner, the bat just flew out from under the back of that three car. Man. Scared me to death, scared the producer to calm down. Well, I mean, <laughs> he, he really got it sideways. <laughs> About right there, when he hit the gas, the back end just went up from under. And you might be right, Benny, when you said, let's let him run a little while before we see how good his car is. Well, now, Labonte is beginning to pull away just a little bit. Part losing. of it was as a result of that slip that Earnhardt made. He's losing ground to Labonte, and Wallace is gaining ground on Dale Earnhardt. There's Jeff Gordon, who is back in 12th spot. Well, that caution flag helped him because we made note of the fact that he wasn't far from going to lap down when uh, that caution came out. So that let him get, get some new life there. And leaders but Jeff has not been among them and Rusty Wallace goes to second and Earnhardt didn't fight him again not like at he all before he just uh, moved over and let him go because he knew Rusty was faster and it looks to me like right now his car is really struggling getting off the corner you see Jeff Gordon right now he's running in 12th spot here at the Martinsville Speedway, and that's uncharacteristic of Jeff Gordon since the Coca-Cola 600 in Charlotte. I mean, this guy has been on a road. That was way back in the late part of it. I mean, he started 14 races. He's won four. Second through fifth, four spots. Sixth through tenth, five times. And one 16th place finish. And you know what that 16th place finish was? At Pocono in June when he missed a shift with a lap yep. or two to go leading the race. Leading yeah. the race. And he's led every single race since Charlotte. Since Charlotte. Well, he's led every race this year except Makes one. Serious point. And he hasn't led this one yet. That's correct. Yep. Twelve straight top ten finishes, but not in the top ten at the moment. He is twelfth. Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, uh, Dick Trickle in trouble in turn four, but no spin. Making a move there to get by Rick running in 15th position. Terry Labonte leads this race. However, Dale Earnhardt has led the most laps, 186. There's Trickle, who is uh, where? Trickle is uh, lap down in 20th position. Yep. And believe it or not, Rick Mast is off the pace. Oh, no. Right. There he is down in turn one. He was running 15th on the lead lap. Unbelievable. That guy just cannot catch any kind of break in this goal car. Well, he is slowing down. He was up in the top ten at one point today. Seventh, as a matter of fact. But now, he is definitely off the pace. We will check on what the problem might be with, with Rick Mass and report to you when we come back to Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. The Goodies 500, led by Terry Labonte.
In a recent State of Florida motor vehicle make, model, and manufacturer study, only one make was ranked number one for fewest chronic defects. Out of the top 20, Ford finished 19, Chrysler 17, Nissan 10, Honda 7, Lexus finished fourth, and rated number one with fewest chronic defects, Oldsmobile. Drive the 88 Royale only 21.4. See the top ranked lineup of Oldsmobiles at your Bradenton, Sarasota, Venice Oldsmobile retailer. All right, class, get out your notebooks. It's convenient. Two campuses, one in Bradenton, one in Venice. It's flexible, AM, PM, year-round. It's for all ages, from the end of high school through the rest of your life. It's affordable, $35 per credit hour. What are we talking about? Manatee Community College. Get your associate in arts or associate in science. Bradenton Campus, 755-1511. South Campus, 493-3504. You will be quizzed on this later. Um, without question, has the best return to serve in the game. He's a tough guy to ace. You know, I think they're the best fans in the whole world. Most of the tracks we go to, there's not uh, a vacant seat anywhere. It's great to be part of a sport that keeps getting bigger and better every year. I love automobile racing. I couldn't be doing this if there weren't people in the grandstand. They're what make NASCAR. Just thank you. Thank you for all the, all the times that you come to the racetrack and set in the rain. Thank you for all the times you come to the racetrack and set in 200 degree heat. Thanks. NASCAR fans, it's true. You're the best in all of sports. Right after the race, stay with us for Shop Talk featuring Jeff Gordon, a conversation with him, and an opportunity to buy some merchandise. That's right after our live coverage of this race, the Goodies 500, here on ESPN. Well, we're riding with Bobby Hamilton there in the STP Pontiac, and while we were away on the break, he drove around uh, Dale Jarrett and took over the fifth position. And we also promised the people a reason why Rick Mass slowed down, and that was a brake problem. Got a brake seal on an O-ring or something on the right front go away, and he had to take the car behind the wall. I guess he'll try to repair it. Well, here's an on-track interval. First to second, Labonte to Wallace from 1.3 seconds on lap 353 to 9 tenths of a second on lap 357. But once again, you see that fourth lap, yep. it just doesn't fit in there with a professional like Terry Labonte, so evidently some traffic was a problem for Labonte. How about Earnhardt? He's back in third position. Yeah, but he's hanging pretty close in yeah. there. Rusty's trying his best to get under lake speed. He would love to pass him on the inside. That's a little faster and more the preferred line, and he does it. Lake speed, by the way, is five laps down in 25th, moving over to the high side, letting the Rick Mast and John Kernan have found each other down in the pit area. John? Well, Rick has pulled it behind the wall after a brief stop on pit road. Rick, a problem with the brakes? Yeah, I, I think he pushed the seal out of the right front caliber. Uh, Martinsville just didn't cause that. I mean, that's, that's a deal that happened. I don't know why it happened. It's like the fourth or fifth race that didn't happen. Uh, you know, we just kind of eyed them along. We, we had a couple stops. We were trying to work in the car, and we got back, and we got up through the field a couple times. And, they were basically trying to get to the end of the race to have a problem, and then this happens, but uh, maybe we'll win North Wilkesboro next week. All right, Rick with his file, getting ready to go to North Wilkesboro next week. They're going to replace the right front brake caliper and then get him back out. And uh, just heard another car screaming down behind pit wall. I think Michael Waltrip has also taken it behind the wall. He certainly I played in the Rick Mass, the second annual Rick Mass golf tournament last week up in uh, Lexington, Virginia. He oh, told yeah. me yesterday they raised about $45,000 for the free medical clinic up in Lexington. Wow, that's Very great. nice. Very nice. Steady progress by the 43, started 12th, has been in the top 10 just about all day. Now running in fifth position. How'd you do in the golf tournament is what we all want to know. It rained. <laughs> we broke the drought. <laughs> That's the next victim for Bobby Hamilton is Sterling Marlin in the Kodak Film Chevrolet. And he's gaining on him, uh, Benny. He's uh, stepped down to under two seconds now. He lost about 
A little over three seconds. And ahead of Sterling Marlin is the three-car Dale Earnhardt. And he is right on Rusty's back bumper. Rusty forces second. Keeping the pressure on. As a matter of fact, right now, the second car is running second. The two cars running second. The three cars third. And the four cars fourth. And the five cars first. And yeah. We got a little out of sequence there. Darrell Waltrip has moved into the top ten, as you can see. Kyle Petty back to 11. Jeff Gordon continues to run in 12. And there now there are just 15 cars on the lead lap after Rick Mass had his problem. We'll let everybody drive through here so you can see where your favorite car is running on the racetrack. Darrell Walter up on the back bumper of Jeff Bodine battling for the ninth spot. And there once again is our leader, Terry Labonte, who's going for his fourth victory, his fourth victory in 1995. And Jerry Punch is with Michael Walter. Well, it doesn't take a genius to tell you something's awfully hot here in the Pennzoil Pontiac. And, uh, Michael, it looks like it's awfully warm back there. Is the rear end? Yeah, I think the, the pump froze up. And that, uh, uh, getting the lap fluid to circulate through the cooler and it burnt the gear up. But, uh, you know, we we're having a good run keeping her on the lead lap. And, uh, the Pennzoil Pontiac, uh, was handling well and running good. Shame for these boys because, uh, you know, it's just a, a part malfunction. They do a great job preparing this part for me. We've completed more laps than anybody uh, lately, and and uh, we're leading the Die Hard Award, so we don't want to lose that. But uh, there's some people out there that are running right now, so we're losing our lead. We'll have to try to get her fixed and get back out there. Well, back out of the way. They're going to try to put the pump, another pump on. They just pulled the pump out here, and we can show you. We'll get Corky to pan around here. We can show you the pump that actually was burned up here. That actually, that's the pump right here that sends the, the uh, rear end grease up through the rear end. And I'm not going to touch it here. It's awfully hot, as you can see. But this pump, the inside shaft, is broken. And there you see the pulley on the pump. There's a little belt that goes over to the yoke that I showed you on the gear, and that's what turns the pump. It runs off the drive shaft of the yoke. Man, oh, man. That's a witch's boil. No kidding. Man. Mm -hmm. Michael Walter, by the way, has been running at the finish in the last 21 straight races and is one of those who is desperately battling to stay in the top 10 to be on the stage in New York, coming into this race in ninth points position. 122 laps to go in the Goodies 500 at Martinsville. We'll be right back. Hello from Plank Road, where our man Paul has breaking news about Ice Brewed Ice House. While most folks like the handy-to-hold 12-ounce bottle, others demanded cans, and we listened. Then someone said, instead of just six packs, how about 12 packs of this smooth brew? And then a cry went out across the land for 24-pack cases. So now, no one else stacks up to Ice Brewed Ice House. Thanks, and enjoy. Now, an oil made just for your hard-working engine. 4x4 from Quaker State. Off-roading, extreme temperatures, towing and hauling. They all make your light truck or 4x4 work extra hard and could shorten its life. Why settle for a conventional car oil? Get 4x4 from Quaker State. The intelligent oil for hard-working engines. Now, take home a legend. Get an authentic autograph, superstar lithograph, a $30 value, just $7.50. See details on cases of 4x4 at your local supplier. ESPN College Game Day here. Tonight, we're in Lester's dorm room to give our viewers more insight into the life of a college football player. You had quite a day, Lester. Up at six for weights, classes till two, three hours of practice. Whew. You must be pushed, huh? Plus, you got a big game Thursday night on ESPN. That's got to make it a lot tougher for you to fall asleep, huh? Is this linen? Wow, guys, check this out. Ooh, soft to the touch, too. Mm -hmm. Back at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, the Goodies 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race. They're trying to get Ricky Craven back out onto the racetrack. He is currently 61 laps down in 32nd, but his Rookie of the Year challenger, Robert Presley, is 35th, 95 laps down. John? Bob, they just had to push start the car as Ricky Craven heads from behind pit wall out on the pit road to rejoin the race. 
they dropped the valve. So what Rick Ren and his crew chief told me that they have done and been working on behind the wall, they removed some rocker arms. They're trying to make the engine live, running on only seven cylinders. But Rick told me it looked like some of the garbage from that broken valve has gone through the motor, and they're not quite sure exactly how long that engine in that Kodiak car is going to last. Bob, I'm not sure that the rookie points will be affected at all here today because they only take the top 15 finishes during the year for the rookie drivers, and, and both of them are going to finish so far down that I don't think it'll make a whole lot of difference in the points. There's the other rookie contender, Robert Presley. By the way, uh, Ken Schrader has been into the pits. He's back out there now. Still only one car, Hut Strickland officially out of contention. And here we go, the five-car battle, all these four positions. That's 9, 10, 11, and 42. That's 24 almost got together as Jeff Gordon is trying to go by Kyle Petty on the outside. And he's going to make the pass. No, nope, no, nope. Kyle comes back up, going into the turn. So he's going to have to work a little bit harder than that for it. Meanwhile, Darrell Waltrip looked like he was going to drive up on the outside of Jeff Bodine. Couldn't make it. 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th there. Here is 4th and 5th. Marlin and, and we're riding on top of the STP Pontiac driven by Bobby Hamilton. Michael Walter the race. He's going out right now as he speaks, Rob. And this is a battle for the 4th position. Hamilton was back over 3 seconds. And here is DW making that pass on Jeff Bodine. He goes to ninth. Oh, and, and here comes Gordon. Bump. Here is Gordon Whoa. trying to pass Jeff Bodine. Move back into the top ten. Jeff Gordon trying to. Five cars there racing for positions. We see the 42 car. We mentioned that Barry Dodson had left over there. And Jim Long, the crew chief, also left this week. Well, who's the crew chief? Keith Simmons, the chief engine builder, is the crew chief on the 42 this weekend here in Martinsville. Here is Bobby Hamilton, had a nose alongside of the four-car Sterling Marlin coming off the turn, but couldn't get the traction he needed, and uh, fell back. Sterling seems to be struggling a little bit coming off the turns, but holds on to the position before the moment. NASCAR has told the 41 car to go ahead and park it because the car is uh, running too slow and smoking, and John Kernan is with Ricky Craven. Well, Ricky, you guys uh, made some adjustments, took a couple rocker arms off, went back out there, ran on seven cylinders, but it didn't last long. No, it chewed it up pretty good. Uh, Got to admire the spirit of the team, you know, they keep trying. I want to thank Kodiak and Chevrolet for entering me into Winston Cup here this year. I've really enjoyed myself. We're going to have a lot of good races coming up. We're just going to suffer through some of these bad ones. Well, Ricky Craven with a bit of a smile, but he is finished for the day, Bob. So two cars now out of the race, Craven and Hut Strickland. And Terry Labonte has been having trouble getting by Jeff Burton. Jeff Burton was in the lead lap in the Rebecca car. He now is a lap down, so now only 14 cars left in the lead lap. But while Labonte was battling Burton, it's let Rusty Wallace uh, gain about half the distance he, there was between he and the five. There we see Rusty Wallace just a few car lengths now behind Terry Labonte. And the next car will be left will be Mark Martin as we watch this battle that we saw a little bit earlier there. Kyle Petty and Jeff Gordon and Bobby Labonte. They're running in the 11th, 12th, and 13th positions. Jeff Gordon just passed Kyle Petty a couple laps ago, but now Kyle is trying to get back by him. And the leaders aren't very far behind as Mark Martin about to go a lap down right now. And the these cars will be the next ones to go a lap down. It's about a half a straightaway. While we watch Hamilton and Marlin battle for that position, it's interesting to note there's a big donut on the side of Kyle Petty's car. There's also a mark on the 18, but the guy going for the championship, the 24 car, I don't think there's a mark on the two. And Bobby Hamilton made that pass, took over fourth, as we saw. They're getting around Sterling Marlin, dropping Marlin back to fifth. Now Dale Jarrett moves right up on Sterling Marlin. Here's Bobby Labonte going on the inside of Jeff Gordon. Seems like the longer Gordon's car runs, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. Now here is Dale Jarrett taking his position away from Marlin. So Sterling has fallen back 
several spots here just in the last few laps. He's all the way back to sixth and a spin. Oh, and two cars had to take evasive action and go through the pits, namely Elton Sawyer and Jeff Bodine. Wow. And it happened right in front of Terry Labonte. And hey, there's no caution. No caution at no all. No caution. And I don't think these drivers realize there isn't a caution out. Everybody slowed because of the huge puff of smoke that was in turn four, but NASCAR never threw the caution. And they, the leaders, Terry Labonte and Rusty Wallace, both those cars kind of went through of the one and two slow speed slow because they thought the caution was going to be out, but they got on the back stretch, and I'm sure the spotter started screaming no caution and they accelerated. Bobby Hamilton slowed down quite a bit. He had moved up into fourth place. Dale Jarrett, uh, his spotter, Johnny on the spot and said, hey, no call can take off. Jarrett got up into fourth place. So, lots going on. Mark Martin has gone a lap down now. Yeah, he's in 15. And there's Jeff Burton. Remember a couple of laps ago that Labonte passed Jeff Burton? Jeff Burton's back in front of him again. And he was one of those that took the advantage, but boy, a lot of smoke there. They had to slow down because they couldn't see. There's Terry Labonte coming. And now right there is a smoke. crash. There is a crash right in front of the leaders. And Rusty Wallace stopped. I don't know if he hit the car or not. But he is right into the side of the 27 car. And Rusty waits until there's a break. Now gets it. But boy, loses a lot of track position. Wow. What a day for Rusty Wallace. This is the second time he has been involved in or the in some way involved in. Let's take a look at it again. There we see once again Jeff Burton in the 8 car and Terry Labonte in the 27 spins and Burton just crashes right into him. Labonte goes through the grass. Earnhardt never hits a thing, stays on the racetrack. But Rusty committed himself up high there and got right up to the 27 car. I don't think he hit him. If he did, he didn't hit him hard. He had to back up. Then he had to wait for tracking to go by before he could get down on the inside. Now, everybody's in the pit. John Kearney. Bobby Hamilton, during that first spin there, said he couldn't see to go anywhere in the track. That's why he slowed down and lost his spot. It's a four-tire change for him. No chassis adjustments. Dale Jarrett is in. They'll take a round and a half out of the left rear. Let's get into Jerry Labonte's pitch. Jerry Punch. Well, they've already changed right and left side tires, but the right front tire off, off the Labonte's car rolled out and rusty hit it as he came down pit road. The three car also getting service. And he is down. And let's go to the back pit. Darrell Waltrip is in. They've already changed the right side tire. Kyle Hedges is also fitting back here for four tires. The left side lug nuts come off. Then they tire shanks off. They bring for Darrell. They clean the windshield. The lug nuts back on. Darrell breaks down. Five. Waltrip hustling out of the back pits. fall into position ahead of Rusty Wallace. So the caution is out now for the eighth time here at Martinsville with less than 100 laps to go. In South Dallas, a lot of folks like to work in their cars, and a lot of them come to AutoZone. They save money on top quality parts, and they find helpful people like Rocky Brown. Oh, sure, there are other parts stores in town, but Rocky's the kind of guy folks go out of their way to see. He's good at solving problems, and he really knows his parts. You see, when it comes to getting the right part, the right price, and good advice, there's just no place better than AutoZone. Smaller electrodes, more power. More electrodes, faster start. Suddenly, everybody has a new spark plug idea promising instant higher performance. But one new plug's idea is higher performance that lasts. Introducing Autolite Double Platinum. Platinum on both sides of the gap for faster starts and more power every time. Platinum to platinum firing for guaranteed peak performance. Long after other ideas have peaked out. Autolite Platinum and now Autolite Double Platinum. More precious metal for your precious metal. This is about how you go to sleep one day, running your business the same way you always have, and wake up the next morning with things like email, voicemail, PCs, pages, a new communications network for free. It's not a fairy tale, a myth, or a parable. This is about how things can really happen. This is about opening your eyes instead of closing them, and making a call instead of a wish.
Network MCI. That's how. Jeff Burton's Rebestas Ford is damaged as a result of the incident we had on the racetrack, causing the most recent caution. This is what happened first to the 90 car, Benny. He comes off the corner, he just nails the gas, does a 360, and creates so much smoke that no one really could see. Darrell Walter sneaks by, but all these other cars are really blind. And this is the view that Walter had. Right after that, this happened. There, the 27 car spins right in front of Jeff Burton. There was the leader, Terry Labonte. He had to get down on the grass and come around. Earnhardt drove by, but Rusty Wallace committed himself up there. He couldn't get down. He drove right up to Elton Sawyer and had to back up. Hey, guys, did you notice who the first car behind the spinning 27 was? Jeff Gordon. The leader, the Winston Cup points leader. Yep. He was the next car behind the spinning cup. About to go a lap down. And here's Jerry. They kept the 24 car out on the racetrack, guys, so they could lead a lap and pick up those five bonus points. But uh, basically, they haven't been able to do anything with the chassis. They just lowered the Panard bar two complete rounds, trying to get the car to come in, but it just won't do anything. Ray Evernham said it's a brand new race car, and to sum it up, we're just junk today. We just can't even compete out here today. Let's go over to Bill, who's standing by with Jeff Burton. And the Ray Best is scored behind the wall. Jeff, you got caught up in a mess out there. Well, the 27 car spun, and when he did, uh, the five car and I was side by side. When he spun, I didn't know if he was going to go up high or what he was going to do. He ended up stopping right in the middle of the track. And um, I wanted to go low, but the five car was there, and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't run over him to keep from, you know, there's nowhere to go. So I ended up just running right into the 27. It's a shame because we weren't great, but we were decent. We started 30, then we were running about 12, and uh, had another top 15 going. Yeah, well, the front of this car is all torn up. His crew will work on getting it back out. But right now, he's uh, behind the wall. This team would really like to finish strong, too. He's got a new ride with Roush Racing in 96. Let's take a look at the point standings, if they were awarded right now, the points from this race. You can see that Terry Labonte is the only one in the top five that makes a move. He moves into the top five, up two positions. Ted Musgrave moves down two. Rusty Wallace stays the same. And Bill Elliott moves into the top ten, putting Morgan Shepard down to 11. Bobby Hamilton, Morgan Shepard, uh, Jarrett would also move up position, Rudd down, and Cope up. So a lot of positions are being changed here in the top 20. And Darrell Walter would gain two spots if points were awarded for right now. Yep. Okay. Next time by. Yep, one lap to go signal being given. Jerry, uh, what's the story on Rusty? Along with being involved in that caution flag, they had a miscue in the pits here. Bob cost them about an extra five or six seconds. They let the jack down too quickly on the right side. They didn't have one lug nut tight, so they had to jack the car back up and tighten the lugs. And the crew, of course, wanted to be quick in the pits, and they just got a little too quick for themselves. Rusty lines up in ninth position for the restart. There are 13 cars on the lead lap, and Jeff Gordon, ha having stayed out on the track, as Jerry Punch pointed out, to get those five bonus points, made a late pit stop. He's in 13th, but that's about where he was before the caution came out, so he had nothing to lose. Good strategy on their part as the green flag waves. Those five bonus points, very important, of course. Here's the green, and oh, Labonte a little loose on the starting line, getting tapped by Dale Hurd of Dale Jarrett, and Labonte slides up the track. And he is losing positions one after another as Bill Elliott pulls on the inside of him. Darrell Walker coming up there now. I don't know what happened to Terry Labonte there. But, okay, how about it, Terry Punch? Apparently, Terry said the car just stopped pulling all of a sudden. They thought they might have a problem with the drive plate on one of the rear wheels. Uh, the crew now is going to run back up toward their truck, but obviously the car not running nearly like they would like to have had it. Yeah, when the green flag dropped, it just did not go, and Dale Jarrett was right behind him and had to give him a little tap, and uh, Terry moved over to let everybody go by, but he has lost several positions. Now back to seven. Boy, now now the car seems to be pulling. Yeah. And we see Rusty up on the outside of Jerry Cole. That is for eighth position. Trying to get the Miller genuine draft forward on the outside and take over the spot. Still can 
get it done. Well, there are a lot of cars there that are running together on the same left. There's Jeff Bodine, of course, the Derek Coke car, and Bobby Lamonti back there. Kyle Petty is going to the left. And Rusty finally makes that pass happen on the 12 car. Yeah, he's up on uh, Daryl Walter, who is in the uh, more on Terry Labonte from Jerry Punch. What Terry said he thought happened on the restart was he thought the drive plate had broken because the car didn't want to pull, didn't want to turn in the corner. But what Terry's spotter told him happened was the 28 car, the nose of the 28 car actually picked the rear of his car up. That's why it wouldn't turn. <laughs> okay. I got that position in Talladega one time. You think that wasn't exciting? <laughs> the car lifted the yeah. rear wheels, my rear wheels up, and started spinning down the straightaway about 200 miles an hour. Oh, mm. mercy. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you? Get <laughs> <laughs> back on the ground. Get some traction. And there we see Labonte trying to get by Elliott. Fifth and sixth. Body trying to move into fifth position. Moves on the inside of Bill Elliott, and he does it. So he still has a good race car. And I tell you what, if this thing goes green the rest of the day, the rest of the way, we have only have about 81 laps. Looks to me like Earnhardt is looking pretty sweet. He's looking awfully good, because Terry Labonte has a lot of traffic to come up through before he can ever get up there, too, Earnhardt. Not only those that are in the lead lap, but some lap cars that are battling each other for position, so it's going to be tough for him. And Dale Jarrett has started back about 14th, didn't he, Ned? Started 14th. And he's all of his points down. He's running second, so he's been mired back in traffic. Maybe he's got something for Earnhardt. Let's see if he does. Well, his car has been working better on the longer runs, so we'll see how it goes. Best finish at a Goodies 500 came a year ago at this time. He was fifth. We'll be back with more live coverage in a moment from Martinsville. Now, an oil made just for your hard-working engine. 4x4 from Quaker State. Off-roading. Extreme temperatures. Towing and hauling. They all make your light truck or 4x4 work extra hard and could shorten its life. Why settle for a conventional car oil? Get 4x4 from Quaker State. The intelligent oil for hard-working engines. Now, take home a legend. Get an authentic autograph, superstar lithograph, a $30 value, just $7.50. See details on cases of 4x4 at your local supplier. You know, I never really learned my school fight song. Oh, I know it. Hell, alma mater. War Eagle Philly, so true. Give me some music. They lit up scoreboards from Ann Arbor to Tuscaloosa. They were warriors of Saturday afternoon. Well, the son of no turf. On to victory, strike up the band. Now relive it all with Burger King Legends of College Football Cups. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Obviously. <laughs> a wiser choice than a fight song album. They're all true blue. We'll all stick together. What, is this your idea of excitement? Let me tell you about exciting, okay? Driving around a racetrack at over 200 miles an hour, that's exciting. These are just flakes. Well, what do you think? These are really good. They're crispy, too. Really? Yeah, they're mighty good even with nothing on them. What, what are they? Hey, Charlie. Yeah. Kellogg's Corn Flakes? <laughs> How could I be so dumb? You got 500 miles to think about it. Kellogg's is proud to sponsor NASCAR champion Terry Labonte. He has led 207 laps. While we were away, there was a spin. Watch to the right. That's Morgan Shepard sideways making a complete spin around. No caution, and everybody keeps going. Right in front of Jeff Gordon, the points are. I mean, everything is happening today in front of Jeff Gordon. Here's Morgan Shepard's in car. There you 
on Jeff Gordon and Kyle Petty and how close it was. Morgan is in 21st position, five laps down. Not having a good day. They came over here and tested and ran good, but... Yesterday's super truck race here at Martinsville was rained out. You can see it live on ESPN2 tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock Eastern and then on ESPN Classic either at 9 or 10 tomorrow night depending upon the Davis Cup outcome. So check your local listings 9 or 10 o'clock tomorrow night on ESPN for the super truck by Craftsman race here at Martinsville which will be held tomorrow morning weather permitting and uh, I assume that since it didn't rain today very much it isn't going to rain at all tomorrow. Certainly hope that's the case. Yep. Dale Jarrett running second to Dale Earnhardt. Dale is driving with what has to be a very uncomfortable broken rib. You know a year ago today we were talking about him uh, running up in the top five with a broken hand from Dover, <laughs> Delaware. <laughs> this year it's a broken rib from Dover, Delaware. <laughs> Here's John Kernan. I just talked to Larry McReynolds about Dale to find out if he had said anything about whether he's feeling any pain. Larry said they've asked him several times throughout the race today how he's doing. Dale's answer, I'm doing just fine. Now, he's got a little extra padding in the car. He's got two inflatable cushions, one on his left side and one against his lower back. Now, he can control the, uh, those, those cush cushions and pillows, how stiff they are, how soft they are, with a little hand. So apparently that's keeping him very comfortable. As far as the car goes, Larry said they've been fighting a loose condition all day. But this last stop, they made an adjustment, a round and a half a bike. They think they may have the car set up for the run to the end. He's turning better lap times right now, John, after this uh, period as we watch that battle for fourth place. Terry Labonte trying to take it away from Bobby Hamilton than, he, than Dale Jarrett was earlier. He's staying about the same distance behind Dale Earnhardt. He's about two seconds behind him, so Earnhardt coming up on traffic now. He'll be lapping some traffic as this battle continues here before. I was just going to say, I wonder if Dale would be as comfortable as he is right now if he were running about 30th and the <laughs> car wasn't handling No, <laughs> I can tell you that. He would not be. Here's Labonte to the inside of Hamilton now and goes into fourth. So Labonte mounts his charge now back to the front where he was a few laps ago. Good battle between Bill Elliott and Rusty Wallace. Battle for sixth six place. Yep. All right, Bob. Right. So Rusty started ninth after the pit stop. And coming up working on the sixth place. Well, he's been up there in the top ten all day in the McDonald's Ford. But well, that McDonald's team made a lot of people happy down here. It about all day. And just about 12.30, I guess it was, I was standing pretty close to the McDonald's truck as we walked west to try it on the outside there. Dale didn't might know. He's not going to be able to but Dale Earnhardt is in fact. But anyway, they come wheeling carts of food in there that you wouldn't believe. Oh, Ned, the don't tell Benny McDonald's, that. McDonald's uh, uh, franchisee from up at Danville, Virginia, brought that food in here for that crew to eat. Then they started inviting everybody else, and I happened to get invited. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love it. Sorry about that, Benny. I know you were up here trying to do the truck race, and it was raining, but boy, they had a feed. I'm not sure Benny will be able to say anything the rest of the race. He's so disappointed. <laughs> Huh? I got nothing to say. <laughs> the Labonte passes Jeff Bodine, and that takes over the ninth spot. There's 9, 10, and 11. You know, I used to be a good friend of Bill O. Jeff Bodine's best finish this year was a sixth at Pocono in July. His best short track finish was at Richmond. The first race there, he finished 11. Elliott and Wallace once again. Right away ahead of the other group. And they're more than, no, not quite a half a lap, almost a half a lap behind Dale Earnhardt. Just 58 laps to go as Dale Earnhardt continues to lead this race. Earnhardt with about a two and a half second advantage on Dale. Almost five on Marlon, almost six on Terry, and a little over six 
advantage over Bobby Hamilton. So Dale Earnhardt looking for win number four this year in the 1995 NASCAR Winston Cup Tour. And if Earnhardt can lead this race one more lap, as it looks like he's going to, he will clinch the bonus points for the most laps led today. And he will gain five points. Five extra bonus points, and there he comes. He does it. So he'll re be receiving ten bonus points today. He's led 224 laps so far. We'll be back in just a moment. The date has been set. The countdown has begun for the 95 factory authorized Lincoln Clarence countdown. Now you can lease Lincoln Town Car with just $4.99 down, then $4.99 a month for 24 months. That's right, just $4.99 down for Lincoln Town Car with a luxurious interior, rear-wheel drive, and a V8 that can go 100,000 miles between scheduled tune-ups. But hurry, see your Lincoln dealer today. $4.99 down and $4.99 a month on Town Car ends September 27th. The Telepersonals Network. Now the personals are on TV. Every night, live here on cable. If you're single, turn it on. On the Telepersonals Network, you'll see ads from hundreds of singles in your area. Place your own free ad. Listen and respond to other ads. The Telepersonals Network. It's the single best way to meet someone special. Tune in to TPN nightly from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. on cable channel 19. tour winding down just five more races remain after today we'll televise two of them for you next week's race at north wilkesboro on the finale on november 11th at atlanta rusty wallace goes to the inside of bill elliott and tries to take over fifth position terry labani has moved to third and this race is not over by any means although dale earnhardt has a rather comfortable lead at the moment now, I'm sure we're wondering, fans are wondering, what happened to the four car that was running up there in third place, Sterling Marlin? Well, he's out of the top ten now. He's dropped back to 11th position. We understand he has a brake problem on the Kodak film Chevrolet. Now, then we see some, we see some smoke coming off that right front there. I don't know uh, exactly what that was all about. And meanwhile, right behind him is the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. If he can get by him, that would be fourth position. And there goes Gordon by the four car. So he picks up one more spot. There's the 21 car. Let's go underneath his car as we have before and see how the glow is this time. Well, not nearly as much as it was in the early going and uh, about the same or maybe even a little less than it was in the middle stages of the race. Probably not using the brakes right now as bad as hard as he was before. We can see that he certainly isn't using as bad as hard as he was. Not hitting the pedal as hard as he was before. I'll spit it out. <laughs> and Sterling Marlin about to go a lap down now. Dale Earnhardt goes back. So now there are just 12 cars on the lead lap. And Jeff Gordon is the 12th place car. And he's not far from going a lap down. He's been that way several times today. Martin, fourth in the points. How's he been doing? Well, right now, he's in 15th place, one lap down. He has not led a lap so far today. He started this race in fourth position. He was as high as second on 136 lap, and his lowest position has been 18th on lap 309, currently in 15th. Currently running in the seventh spot, the Western Auto Chevy. Bobby Labonte right behind him there in eighth place. Top 
10, currently in seventh. And if he finishes in the top 10, it would be his 30th top 10 finisher at Martinsville in 42 events. Well, that's quite a, quite a record. That is. Just shows how good of a race driver he is and how smart of a race driver he is. By virtue of his points position, of course, everybody started this race according to points. Morgan began in 10th spot, and that is as high as he has gotten. His low is 34th on lap 90. He is currently running in 21st position and is six laps down to the leader. trailing Dale Earnhardt, but by how much? He's there. losing ground. Is he? There he is. So that's the interval from first to second. And the spin. And caution is out. And again, Jeff Gordon is saved. He was about 100 feet <laughs> from being a, put a lap down. Yep. Oh, and Blake Speed. Got his car going right in front of the leader, Earnhardt, trying to save that lap. Well, <laughs> it's our ninth caution of the day. And it will set up some pit stops now. Hopefully to the end of the event, which is only 37 laps from being over. seeing the five car of Terry Labonte turn in some excellent pit stops and the crew is going to get another chance at it here in a moment. Here comes Earnhardt. But you Jarrett. see that Terry Labonte is at a huge disadvantage. He's a couple of seconds behind Earnhardt getting in. And John Kernan is there. Four tire change. They're also adding a round of wedge in the left rear the same tire pressure. Bill Jarrett. Here's Jerry Punch and Earnhardt's pit. And they have changed right side tires. They will not change left side tire change only for Dale Earnhardt. Meanwhile, they're changing left side tires on the Terry Lavonte car. Here is the five car. He is down. He will come down pit road right on his side of Terry Coke and Dale Jarrett. Why Let's did Rusty Wallace not pit? Well, track position, I guess. Let's go to Bill Weber. Darrell Waltrip is in for four tires. Dale Earnhardt has already gone by. Now Labonte and Jared also wheel by. They're putting the right side tires on the Western Auto Chevrolet. Kyle Petty is also on pit road further down. Way goes Darrell. Bobby Labonte who goes by. Waiting for Kyle Petty to leave pit road. Jeff Gordon rolls by. Now Petty with the race. Walter's so, coming back out. Rusty Wallace picks up the lead. Yeah, he, he can go the rest of the distance, I think, as far as fuel is concerned. And uh, didn't want to give up that track position. Stays up front. Question is, will the tires be able to carry him to the victory? We'll be back to answer that question and others in a moment. Man has always been fascinated with speed. But winning is more than a flash of speed. It's a measure of skill. A test of guts. That's why the true spirit of NASCAR lies not in the machine, but in the man who drives it. We're proud to be part of this great sport. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. If you don't replace your air and oil filters regularly, you might as well drive your car off a cliff because dirt can really mess up an engine. Fram Extra Life Air Filters and Fram Extra Guard Oil Filters keep out dirt best to protect your engine. Fram, America's number one premium brand. Pay a little now for a lot later. Buy any two Fram filters and get your favorite officially licensed NFL team cap for $1.99. Onions? Plenty of onions. I think it's going to be a great weekend, don't you? Well, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, jeez. Hey, how are you guys able to talk about every game on prime time? You can't watch every game. Well, Art, we got a room with 13 TVs where all the games are on at the same time. 13 TVs. 13 TVs. 13 TVs. Art. 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 Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm all right. Good. Good. Hey, how come you guys never have me over to your house on Sunday? 
Next week, our motorsports coverage begins at 3 o'clock Friday afternoon on ESPN2 with Winston Cup qualifying. Speed Week has the latest motorsports results and news at 12.30 Saturday morning. Dave Despain will be live at North Wilkesboro later Saturday morning with NASCAR Today. The Lowe's 150 Super Truck Race by Craftsman will be seen at 6.30 Saturday night on ESPN2. And then the go-karts from the Major Taylor Velodrome on Lightning at 8.30. Sunday begins with a Formula One race, the Grand Prix of Europe at 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time. Dave has the pre-race show from North Wilkesboro on 2 at 12.30, just before our live coverage of the Tyson Holly Farms 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race at 1.00. RPM tonight at 8 o'clock on 2. We'll have all the results with Kenny May. That's next week here on ESPN, and here's Jerry. Talk to Robin Pemberton. Why didn't Rusty Penny said, hey, guys, track position is so critical here. It takes about 10 laps with the tires coming anyway. They're going to restart this race with a little over 30 to go. Our tires are good enough. We think we can hold off the three car because he only took two right side tires. Green flag waves on lap 470. 30 laps to go. Bobby Hamilton only took on two tires. He's up in third place. Derek Cope only took on two tires. He's in uh, fourth place. Terry Labonte and Dale Jarrett took on four. Terry Labonte. Last year in the Good East 500, the winner was the two car. Oh, and Nemechek spins coming off the turn two. Hits the wall, but uh, gets it in gear maybe. Keeps no going. It out. It took a pretty good shot there in the rear. It's hanging down. It looks okay right now, Joe. Just feel it out. Crew said it looks okay. Just feel it out. Try to keep going. As I was saying, they finished first and second here last year. They're running first and second this year. Wallace and Earnhardt. Here's a replay of what happened over there on the back stretch. Out of two. We'll far the, left. Jimmy Spencer in the smoking Joe car, just a little bit of tap on the rear bumper of the 87. And he goes around, backs in the wall. Hit her pretty good. But he keeps going. Everything's all right. And Wallace continues to lead by about five car lengths over Dale Earnhardt. Bobby Hamilton, his last two races, a second last week, a fifth at Richmond, and he's third here this week. This team is coming alive. It really is coming alive. And I tell you what, I'm going to mess with Rusty Wallace, and that Ford is staying out there with those front war tires dead. Certainly is. I, I would have thought that maybe uh, the new tires might prevail. I think they will on a real long run, but we don't have a real long run. There's only 25 laps to go when they come back. Ooh, Dale Jarrett and Derek Coke get in together going into turn three. And, and the, the caution is out. And Grissom and Todd Bodine get together, tearing Grissom's rear bumper off. So Dale Jarrett's excellent run isn't going to be so excellent now as they come down, and he'll allow Dale to stay on the lead lap. Yeah, I think the Earnhardt backed off. I'm glad yep. he'll do that. Yes. Now, Rusty's going to dive back in front of the three. We'll see if NASCAR will decide who... Rusty was thinking that they had taken the caution flag the last time by. Earnhardt is saying, no, we did not take the caution flag. <laughs> so we'll let them decide that while we take a look at what happened up there in the third turn. Dale gets a run going into the turn, gets the fender up alongside. Derek apparently didn't know he was there. They hit, and around they go. Derek made a 360, so he kept going. Once again, same deal. Just make some contact, and you're right. Derek Cope just didn't realize he was there. And Dale Jarrett did have a run on him, and contact was made. Now from Darrell Waltrip's roof cam. Thank goodness for those breaks, huh? <laughs> we'll take another break and be back with the restart here at Martinsville, Virginia. In just a moment, the Goodies 500. You know, at AutoZone, we know our customers work just as hard as we do. So we're open when they need us, at night and on Sundays. 
And since two million folks each week count on AutoZone for what they need, when they need it, we're not about to let them down. That's why we carry so many parts and why we price them so low every day. You see, selling top quality parts at low prices every day is how we make a living. But helping customers, well, that's how we make friends. Okay, I don't see much in here, just kind of flakes. There's nothing wrong with flakes per se. You know, flakes can be very useful when you're making a meatloaf or your bread and fish. Anywho, I'll give them a go. You know, just a little skosh, okay? Because I had the cupcake and the... Ooh, you know? Hold on. Ah! They are, you know what they are? They are tasty. They are crispy and they are crunchy. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. No, oh boy. <laughs> That's a hoot. <laughs> Taste them again for the first time. Under 25. License revoked. Driving without insurance. You're just the guy we're looking for. You are not ready. <laughs> Coming up on 19 laps to go in the Goodies 500, it is Rusty Wallace leading Dale Earnhardt and Bobby Hamilton. There we see Hamilton, the STP Pontiac, and Richard Petty had so much success here at Marshall over the years. Well, tonight, following the race, it'll be Shot Talk with Jeff Gordon, the Davis Cup tennis match at 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Now, Todd Martin is going to be substituting for Agassi in that match. You'll want to tune in at 5. At 8 o'clock tonight, it's the Grand Prix of Portugal Formula One race. Drag racing at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, the NHRA Northwest Nationals. And then tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, live on ESPN2, it's the Super Truck Race from here at Martinsville. And that will be replayed at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, Eastern Time, on ESPN Classic. And no, Ernie Irvin will not be in that race tomorrow. He will start according to points, and of course, Ernie doesn't have any. So he'll make his return to racing next Saturday in the Super Truck Race and the Winston Cup Sunday in the Tyson Holly Farms 400 at North Wilkesboro. And Jeff Gordon is now in the eighth position. This last caution flag if he can maintain was a huge break for gordon he was in 12 spot and he's picked up four spots he has led three laps therefore getting the five points his lowest has been 14th today and uh, he is currently in eight spot again if he has an average 10th place finish remaining six races regardless of what anybody else does jeff gordon will have the nascar winston cup championship an average of 10. Yeah. That's good. As usual, I was not paying attention to it. <laughs> hey, there's the five car of Labonte. He's back and forth. So all of a sudden, Bobby Hamilton, who's worried about being the aggressor now, needs to be a little defensive because here comes Labonte. That Kellogg's car has been strong all day long. Summary, probably our last one of the day as there are only a little over 13 laps remaining a little over 12 laps remaining I should say Rusty Wallace won here at Martinsville in the spring he won the second Richmond race looking for his third victory of 1995 there's the battle for third as Terry Labonte looks to the outside of Bobby Hamilton they're laughing Sterling Marlin who ran into some problems a little bit earlier and had to drop off the pace after being in the top 10 just about all day long. Then it looks like those pressure tires of Bernard is starting to show. Starting to play a little bit here right now. He's putting the pressure on Rusty. Another battle out there is between Jeff Bodine and Bill Elliott. There they are, just ahead of Jeff Gordon. Sixth and seventh. Bernard slipped a little bit off that corner. He lost a couple of car lengths as we watch this battle between Elliott and Bodine. Jeff Bodine has won here at this racetrack four times. The most recent 
through 92. And here comes Labonte on the inside trying to get by Bobby Hamilton. And there's Bobby Labonte watching everything happen in front of him. And here comes Earnhardt on out. the inside. No, we won't make a try for the lead. Oh, oh and Rusty loses it, and here comes Earnhardt. <laughs> Rusty got a little sideways, and that's all that Dale Earnhardt needed. Labonte has passed Bobby Hamilton, so Bobby has Billy, yeah, Bobby Labonte. And Bobby Hamilton went all the way back to field. And he needs to hustle it if he can because here comes Bo Dine and the 18 car. Something happened to the 18 car. Well, he might have a tire going down. I wonder if he might have made a little contact there and he might have cut a tire. Yes, the right front tire is flat on the 18. Oh, what a tough break for Lamonte. That is a real bad break for Bobby. He had moved up to fourth place. There is Jeff Gordon. Well, we mentioned earlier that Dale Earnhardt has to win the races, has to lead the most laps, and uh, Jeff Gordon has to finish at least in 10th. Well, both drivers are doing exactly what they have to do because Jeff is in eighth position and Dale Earnhardt is leading, has led the most laps, and may be in a position to win this race. He's pulled away from Rusty Wallace. Now Wallace looks in his rearview mirror and sees nothing but yellow, green, and red. Terry Labonte. Bobby Labonte came in and got two tires on the interstate batteries. Chevrolet will go down at least a couple of laps, I believe. At least one lap. And Labonte looks on the outside of Wallace. Four laps to go. Watching the battle for second place. Oh, we got a spin down in turn one. Mike Wallace did a 360, keeps going, no caution. He's okay, the caution will not come out. Now three laps to go. Earnhardt continues to pull away from Rusty and Terry as they battle it out. That 98 car, Jeremy Mayfield, the RCA car, has done a terrific job today. Something happened, he lost three laps earlier on. He's been there all day long, three laps down. My hat's off to Jeremy. Good run today. Yep, sir. He's currently in 16th position. Yep. And his closest pursuit was Mike Wallace, who just spun, so undoubtedly Jeremy will finish in 16th position. And Labonte gets under Rusty. Here he comes. Here the right play. The last lap of the race. Dale Earnhardt is in front. Labonte moving to the inside of Rusty Wallace in a battle for second. They come out of the second corner, and Terry has the position from Rusty. Let's see how it shakes out as they enter turn three. Rusty moving alongside. Earnhardt comes off corner number four. He wins the goodies 500, and for second place, it's Terry Labonte. And, and Bobby Hamilton will finish in fourth spot. Jeff Bodine and Bill Elliott. Let's watch as Earnhardt gets by Rusty Wallace. There's the crew, very happy bunch. They're going down, they come off turn two. Now Earnhardt goes on the inside and makes and lets Rusty Wallace know he's there. And Rusty drives in the corner so hard, he can't hold it on the bottom of the racetrack. He tries, and when he did, he gets loose, Earnhardt gets by. Here's John Kernan. With Earnhardt's car owner, Richard Childress, congratulating the crew. Well, you guys are starting out doing what you need to do. If you want to win this championship, lead the most laps and win the race. Well, we've had a plan. We just got a little behind early in the year, and our plan's coming. You with these guys back to shop, built this brand new car. We've got a brand new car for Charlotte. We've had all, you know, we were just all geared up. Just got a little behind early. I'm proud of the job, Dale, and everybody's done, and our sponsor, Jim Goodrich Service. All right, Richard Childress, congratulations. Wow. And it's Dale Earnhardt's 67th career win and fourth victory of 1995. We'll be back to talk with him in a moment. My folks are here. These Super 8 motel rooms are roomy. At these prices, we'll never leave. Super 8 motels, 1-800-800-8000. So affordable, so comfortable. It is morning and it is time for breakfast. You have $1.99. What are you going to do? For rise and shine combos from Hardee's. Choose a made from scratch sausage biscuit, ultimate omelet biscuit, biscuit and gravy, or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. We'll give you hash rounds and your choice of coffee, orange juice, or a soft drink. Four combos, $1.99 each, only from Hardee's. Answer me, Private. Hardee's. All right. <laughs> 
Fresh from the kitchen at Hardee's. Hey, you know my crew spends hundreds of hours building those 5,000 horsepower motors? I can explode one in five seconds. And when that happens, nobody eats. That's why my guys won't run anything but Fram fillers. You know, Fram gets the nasty stuff out of the oil. So I can go to the other end with my candles lit. And you know that's in about five seconds, nearly 300 miles an hour. You can look at these guys and see they eat pretty near every day. In the middle of my work day, I don't do power lunches. I do power lifts. And when you work out this hard, you better use a deodorant that works hard too. That's why I use Speed Stick. It gives me 110% protection that lasts all day. And fortunately, all night. Because while I may not have time for lunches, I always manage to find some time for dinner. Speed Stick, like you, it never quits. And try new Speed Stick Clear for clear protection that never quits. Bye, men. The Maryland Terps are on the move. This week, they'll scamper to Atlanta to tackle the Yellow Jackets at Bobby Dodd. Maryland versus Georgia Tech, Thursday at 8, only on ESPN. And we are back at Martinsville Speedway in Martinsville, Virginia. Think they're celebrating here the Goodies 500 is history. And Dale Earnhardt gets a big hug from Teresa sitting here with Taylor Nicole. And Dale, congratulations. I tell you, got a hand in this race team, mate. And in uh, all the guys who worked hard back at the shop. Uh, uh, so Spenny's engine ran great today. I was on him a little bit about the qualifying package. It's a bit better in the race. It's a good race engine today. And uh, the car worked good. We got two tires that last stop, and that was the key to beating them out. And, you know, Terry had better tires, but he just couldn't he, could, he couldn't work them. And I was wondering about getting by Rusty, but I just saved my tires and uh, was patient and kept working on him. Finally, he started slipping, and I, I got under him, and it was all it took. Did, any concerns at all that you might not be able to get by Rusty? Did you think maybe his tires would go away toward the last few laps? Well, I felt like we could beat him if we got, you know, a 10 or 15 lap run, and that's what it took. And then we just came right on in there. I tell you, I can't say enough about these guys working on this car. They did a great job, and uh, good wrench and all the folks for helping us. Uh, you know, it, it just day in, day out, they work hard. I mean, we've had some bad luck this year, and we should be up there battling Jeff a little closer in the points. But we just had a pretty tough year, but this, these wins helps out. And uh, we'll give it all we got. We ain't give up yet, but it's, it's still a short time to, to do it. Can't do any more and lead the most laps and win the race, Bob. First time a Chevy has won here in Martinsville since April of 91 when Dale Earnhardt was the winner. Full field run up is, rundown is coming up. Shop talk at 4.30 Eastern time. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you're on the lookout for quality used auto parts and tons of them, Jim's Auto Salvage in Sebring is the first and last stop you need to make. We've been in the auto salvage business for over 25 years and have over 40 acres of parts inventory. Individuals and dealers alike will find our warehouses stocked full of late model auto and truck parts. Jim's Auto Salvage delivers daily to businesses throughout Central Florida. Save your money. Why buy new when used will do just fine. Come see us soon at Jim's Auto Salvage and Jim's Import Auto Salvage, both serving you in Sebring. It's the biggest RV sales event of the year. At Harbison Swanston RV Sales in Clearwater, it's our 11th annual September Buyer's Day Sale. Every 95 model in our inventory is drastically reduced to make room for the 96s. And the buy of the year is this 96 Coachman Catalina for only $3.99 down and $3.99 a month. That's right, $3.99 down and $3.99 a month. But don't delay. It's for a limited time only at Harbison Swanston RV Sales, U.S. Highway 19 in Clearwater. For your hard-working engine, 4x4 from Quaker State, off-roading, extreme temperatures, towing and hauling, they all make your light truck or 4x4 work extra hard and could shorten its life. Why settle for a conventional car oil? Get 4x4 from Quaker State, the intelligent oil for hard-working engines. Now, take home a legend, get an authentic autograph, superstar lithograph, a $30 value, just $7.50. See details on cases of 4x4 at your local supplier. The key to a successful marriage is to accept your partner for who he is. Would you act like a human being? You're making a bad impression. Alice, for example, has no problem with my past. Oh my God, did the police see Daddy naked? It wasn't the first time. After 14 years, one of the things I've learned is that marriage is a two-way street. I have to warn you, I can't find my pills. I gotta warn you, that's not gonna work a third time. Bless this house this fall on CBS. 
ESPN Speed World presentation of the Goodies 500 from Martinsville Speedway in Virginia being brought to you by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? By Allied Signals Pram Filters, you can pay a little now or a lot later. And by Quaker State, the intelligent oil for longer engine life. Well, let's take a look at the complete full field rundown of this race held here today, the 26th event of the 1990 five Winston Cup Tour. And you see Jeff Gordon finishing seventh place today. So as you said, Earnhardt did what he had to do and Jeff Gordon and the crew did exactly what they had to do. There were 11 cars on the lead lap as we look at the second 15. Jeremy Mayfield had a real good race as you indicated, Benny. A terrific race. It's just a shame he was three laps down because he was right there at the end. And the rest showing there were only four cars that dropped out of competition. Burton, Sawyer, Craven, and Strickland. Now the point standings. Jeff Gordon, of course, will maintain the lead. Uh, 275 is the interval between Gordon and Earnhardt now. Marlon, Martin, and Rusty Wallace, who moved into fifth position, picking up one spot. Terry Labonte, Musgrave, and we see only two points separating Labonte and Musgrave. And Bobby Hamilton is now in 10th spot. And he picked up two positions, by the way, Bobby Hamilton in the 10th. We'll be back with more as the post-race celebration continues here at Martinsville. In normal Illinois, Gene Goble is popular with folks who need their car fixed. He does good work, and he doesn't charge an arm and a leg. Because when he needs auto parts, Gene buys a lot of them at AutoZone. You see, the prices are low every day at AutoZone. So a lot of good mechanics like Gene just pass the savings on to their customers. Plus, they can still get the best quality parts. Sure, they know how to do the work right, but they also know how to save money doing it at AutoZone. Dad, wake up, what? Dad. Get up, Dad. What is it, Jack? It's Saturday. You said you would take me to McDonald's for breakfast Saturday. Yeah, uh, I know. And you said I could have an egg meat muffin and a big juice. And you said you and Mom would have pancakes and sausage and coffee. And you said you wouldn't go to work today. You said. I know, but it's 3.30 in the morning. Oh. we got plenty of time, okay? Okay. I'll be back in exactly 10 minutes. <laughs> When I punch the clock, I'm a working machine. I got boots that do the job, got my Wolverines. Lay a span of bridge, make that molten steel pour. I can build a better country and keep coming back for more. I can work like hell with my hands and my tools. Cause I feel like heaven in my Wolverine boots. Wolverine Duraceye, guaranteed comfort or your money back. Work like hell, feel like heaven. Wolverine Duraceye, made in the USA. And welcome back to Martinsville with our second place finisher, Terry Labonte, who had one of his best race cars ever here at Martinsville. Congratulations. We did. I tell you what, our Kellogg Chevy ran great. And uh, we had a problem with the rear end. It broke something in the rear end there on the restart. And we thought it was an axle or something. And uh, then it started working again. So we were lucky to finish. I don't know what the what it was, but, uh, you know, we just, just hung in there. And the thing lasted all day. Two lug nuts on your left rear tire at the end of the race, Terry. Oh, really? That's good. It's better than one. <laughs> <laughs> that helps you hold them on, doesn't it? That's right. <laughs> okay, that's Terry Labonte, a great finisher. Second place today, back up top. He led 164 laps of the 500, but of course the winner was Dale Earnhardt. Shop Talk featuring Jeff Gordon coming up here in just a few moments at 4.30 Eastern Time. We'll be back to wrap things up in a moment. With each race, he faces a new challenge. A fresh shot at the pole and another chance to win this season's overall prize. The Push Series Pole Award. Only then will he earn a ride at Daytona, where he'll run with the big boys in the Bush Clash. We're proud to be with him from the first turn to the last. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. If you don't replace your air and oil filters regularly, you might as well drive your car off a cliff because dirt can really mess up an engine. Fram Extra Life Air Filters and Fram Extra Guard Oil Filters keep out dirt best to protect your engine. Fram, America's number one premium brand. Pay a little now. 
for a lot later. Buy any two prime filters and get your favorite officially licensed NFL team cap for $1.99. Nobody undersells Western Auto on name brands. To make sure, we price check the competition daily. We even offer a low price guarantee. Get a great deal on Prestone antifreeze and coolant. Buy two gallons and get a free Bram oil filter and up to four quarts of oil. Hey, for an unbeatable deal on Prestone, get serious. Get Western Auto. Western Auto, no stranger to these parts. What, is this your idea of excitement? Let me tell you about exciting, okay? Driving around a racetrack at over 200 miles an hour, that's exciting. These are just flakes. Well, what do you think? These are really good. They're crispy, too. Really? Yeah, they're mighty good even with nothing on them. What, what are they? Hey, Charlie. Yeah. Kellogg's Corn Flakes? <laughs> How could I be so dumb? You got 500 miles to think about it. Kellogg's is proud to sponsor NASCAR champion Terry Labonte. Back in Martinsville, Winston Cup points leader Jeff Gordon finished seventh today. Jeff, you did what you had to do. Well, we sure would like to have done a lot more, Jerry. Uh, it just wasn't uh, really the day for the DuPont 24 to be up there. But, uh, you know, we fought and fought and fought. We never gave up. These guys kept busting off good pit stops. And, man, Ray Everham did everything he could do. I think somebody said he wanted a 1-800 number dial in to tune us in or something because uh, we just couldn't hit it today. But, man, we feel real fortunate to come out of here seventh. Uh, you know, we really... Got lucky there at the end, caught some of the cautions right at the right time, and, uh, you know, come out of here seventh. Can't complain too much. Difference is 275, Bob. All right, coming up, Shop Talk tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning on ESPN2, the truck race, 10 o'clock tomorrow night on ESPN1. We'll see you at North Wilkesboro next weekend for Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, John Kernan, Jerry Punch, and Bill Weber. I'm Bob Jenkins. So long, everyone.